First off, I want to say R.I.P. Liam Payne. Man, off the third floor? For real? And Angel Reese, don't worry about that. Tell some the crib gonna pay your bills, not. So guess what? Go ahead, hit that subscribe button. Matter of fact, hit that like button. While you at it, hit that notification bell. And somebody come play, somebody please say Safari. It's crazy out there. It's baby mama hopping fences. But it's your boy, <laughs> Jesse J. Phillips of Green 305 with my calls. Chico Grande, Chico two times. If someone call me Shooter McGavin, Bay Bay. Ooh. But welcome to the show. It is Tales from the Crib. We are in episode 178. Halloween is coming up. It's getting scary. It's getting naughty. We're covering all here today on Tales from the Crib. What's up, calls? Man, you already know, man. I'm outside this week, man. I ain't got no curfew. I ain't got no job. You already know what it's time to do. Time to get <laughs> When did you wasted. quit all your jobs? <laughs> Today. <laughs> Today. No, please don't quit. <laughs> please don't quit your jobs on a whim. <laughs> nah, don't man. Do that. Listen here, man. Tales from the Crib is doing great. Reaction Channel is doing great. Gaming Channel was booming. We soon will be on the way. I might as well manifest like the WNBA manifesting. Oh, yeah, yeah. They losing $40 million and they still see it as a win. I think I can see it as a win, too. Yeah. We're gonna we're gonna turn it around quicker than the WNBA watch. Facts. You already know we don't need twenty eight years. Give me three months. Well, speaking of getting twenty eight years. And your social security card. No. But who's spe- getting twenty eight years? Oh man. Welcome to the show. This is the first topic. What do we got? Man, it's your favorite player. Man, looks like yeah, Safari files a petition to reduce his uh his four thousand three hundred and five dollar per month child support and ask a judge to make Erica Manor pay the legal fees. Now you know me, I don't agree. I'm a gentleman. I'm a gentleman. Uncle Jesse, Uncle Jay ain't gonna ain't gonna ain't gonna make you pay the legal fees. But that child support or not, you have to come about that. I don't know what my co-host is talking about. He doesn't get divorced, he just vanishes. Listen, man, y'all make it's you... different when you you don't have to go to court. You just <laughs> move to another state. Exactly, man. I got don't worry about my Elliot. I was You're gonna from... get too famous, you can't keep doing that I'm be like that one guy that got caught up doing YouTube videos and now you gotta pay child support. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna move to Bangkok. Or we know why we're just moving. <laughs> Pause. <now. laughs> but nah, man. <laughs> Horrible. But man, let me get back to the story right here, man. My dog Safari said six months. Six months he been dealing with this crazy BM. She been tweeting about him. She been IGing about him. Beating saying him. little slick comments, calling him a deadbeat. And my dog, I, and everybody knows Safari just want to be a real good daddy. Hop in the fence for him. Exactly. But man, and my cool said hop in the fence for him and all that stuff. But we got a video here of how toxic it gets in the Safari household and why he don't be showing up all them times doing stuff like showing up in my crib five o'clock in the morning pulling out a ladder hopping the fence oh my god what is that oh my god what oh is god. that what is it's that? a bird it's a plane no it's a crazy erica man uh boom man, she got a man look so quick she ain't got no shoes on she just dropped from 10 feet into a dead sprint look at that now she banging at the front door Horrible. You better let me in, Safari. I ain't playing with you. Banging on my windows. Ooh. You gotta pay for that. Breaking stuff? In front of the kids? She set a bad example. I thought... Horrible. Or worse. What? Because I'm dealing Protect with someone man? who is just... Who's... We ain't protected. Cause. Anger management. They don't love us out here. It's just... Non-existent. Facts. When I first what? moved to Florida, I remember I, I got a two-bedroom condo, and the first time I had my kids come over there after my divorce, and I started the whole okay visitation we and having my kids for the days I was having them. So break stuff up in the house, has the kids running over glass, breaking stuff up outside. That's wild to break glass and stuff while your kids walking around bare feet. And not even like pick him up or nothing. He's gonna get custody. After that, I just was like, you know what? If I can't pick up my kids in a place that is like a drop off point or a police precinct, I'm not picking them up because I'm not going to her house text a naked picture of me to my mother and my sister because she wanted to let them know that, oh, you're, you and your, your son, I'm pretty sure your son's not telling you what's really going on between us and all of this other nonsense. Okay. 
me and you are still, you know, having a relationship and that's over with. Thank God that's over with. Like, you know, I, I prayed about that and, and, and there's absolutely nothing physical going on anymore. And you taking naked pictures and sending it to my mother and my sister to do what and prove what? My mother and my sister are the most least problematic people on earth. I mean, first off, uh, Safari, if you was worried about your your mom and your sister seeing your hoo-ha, you wouldn't have made the S toys that you made back in the day, number one. But we ain't talking about it. How do you know about that? He put it on Love & Hip Hop. We've you found, never been we, on the Adam and Eve? We found one of the buyers. buyers. <laughs> your heart. That was a gift. It was, it was for... Uh, I mean, it was a Mother's Day gift. Oh, that was like when uh, What's-His-Face got exposed. Um, Who? The guy that goes like this. Oh, um, Matumbo? No. The white dude, the it's white a streamer dude. that's like a, a fake autistic. Oh, so yeah. Mm -mm. It's horrible. And uh, mm -mm, it's horrible. they're like, wait, how did you know that he did that? Oh, yeah. Oh, his videos he made? Oh, disrespectful. People were like, you had to be into that if you know, <laughs> know what he did. That's nasty. So you know what Safari did? You was into the Safari. Whatever. I wasn't into <laughs> discussing. I wasn't into Safari. But, I mean, all... Well, I mean, all I want to say here is, man, all my dog Safari wanted to do was just lower his child support payment. He ain't getting the funds like he used to get back in the day, cause you know he went here. Nicki Minaj took all his money. I mean, nah, he, he, they wasn't married. They was just together for a long time. And that's another L. He stayed taking L's after L's. Took that one, yep. then took this one. But I mean, if you didn't know, and a monthly, uh, they also uh, monthly the course was saying that Safari makes sixty one k a month. And that's I mean when, that dang that's pretty good. And that was when he was doing. I mean a month. A month. That's so pretty baller. That's basically seven seven hundred fifty k a year. Yeah, I mean he was making that. Anyone that, making that would be great. That's it with him doing loving hip hop, him doing uh, hostings, him doing different gigs and everything. Yeah, yeah for he sure. Was, he was averaging that. And Erica, she only averaging forty one k a year. I mean forty one k a month. She's man, man, so she's she getting like a 50, she half a million. No, she don't need no child support. They're both making similar money. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. You know, but she want. She's saying that first off, she saying he should get custody, so he shouldn't have to pay nothing. Because if you see a mm -hmm. mom being reckless where she's breaking stuff around children that are barefoot, I mean, I don't know what else you need to see. I mean, that's one. I mean, that's hopping one. the fence mm -hmm. on camera, trying to break in, and then when you are inside, breaking stuff while there's kid with no shoes on. But I mean, in in Erica Mena's defense, she said she was Can't doing. That. She said, out of, in her defense, she was saying out of three hundred sixty five days, he only saw his kid sixteen times. So just by doing that, she can send he's, text messages. He's trying to make money for his children. <laughs> Horrible. Now nah, he had that trick. That, that's the thing. That's crazy. If you're out uh -huh. there working like crazy. They're mad because you're working too much and never home. Mm -hmm. And then if you're home too much, they're like, "Why aren't you trying to work more and get us into a better position?" True. You can't win. Or when, or when you got to work to pay child support, then when you finally get the kid, you get it for the whole summer. You like, oh well, I'm put the kid in the summer in a summer camp. You think that's normal? All kids go to summer camp. I got to go to work, so I'm gonna do my work, pick up the kids. We can chill at chill at in the afternoon. The like evening, nope. Yeah, yeah. And like oh no hell no. When you get the kids, since you don't have the kids, you got to spend the whole twenty four hours with they them. They got to go with you on your hosting gigs. Like that your, don't even that's not even they making gotta go sense. Go with you in the studio safari. When's the last time you heard him rap? I mean, he makes you making records every now and then. He still does the reggae stuff, and he's always dancing and doing that stuff and performing. Of course, straight. Exactly, you don't know about that. But I um, mean, so I mean, it's it's just I mean, it's just real disrespectful in the whole safari house. So they got two kids together. They was married. They got divorced in 2022. So they finalized that finalized that real quick. But I mean, a lot of people online saying, "Safari, this is what you get." Didn't you see the signs? Erica Mendel was already crazy. She sabotaged DJ Envy because she was uh, allegedly. No, they wasn't allegedly. Oh, she was like super messy on Love and Hip Hop, yeah. right? Always getting in a fight, always in the middle of drama. Yes. I didn't watch the show, but I mean, I think I remember her from just the commercials of mm -hmm. her like being wild and throwing stuff. That's all you remember is wild, throwing stuff, and yeah. always crying. And I mean, that's what he wanted. I mean, they send in Love and Hip Hop, that's what you get because he over there messing with everybody in the Love hey, and Hip Hop sometimes cast. Sometimes you want to tame a stallion, man. Dude. Sometimes you're going to tame the wild stallion. This is why you're supposed to go who likes you. Erica Manali said, Safari been chasing me for three years, and then now you got me, and then it's Apparent, happened. Apparently, you have to chase too long. It looks like she fell. A few <laughs> kids popped out. I don't I'm, know what type of chase that is. I mean, I don't know. It's, it's just crazy. I mean, he out here, oh, he dodging, dodging, uh, basically, he out here 
basically taking penitentiary chances because the way that she's acting, he could swing off on her. Because this video would have went a whole other way around because you seen how she was pushing up on him? He ain't called a cop. I mean, kudos to him for keeping his composure and doing the right thing by just exactly. ignoring her. Uh, ignoring her. Because we've seen too many celebrities where they lose their cool. Jonathan Majors. And even if it's like they, you know, push them so they can get away or something, if you do anything, it's, Going to looked jail, at, man. it's looked at as you're bad. So, I mean, even if you got to get hit, unfortunately, as a man, that's something that you got to do. You just got to take the hits, either run away, get in another room, shut the door, call the cops. You got to get away because the moment you defend yourself, Wrong, right, or indifferent, you're in the, you're gonna be looked at badly. Exactly. I mean, it's like it's a you in a lose lose situation. Because exactly. imagine if you were at a girl house and then she snatched the covers off off the cuff, snatch the covers off you, and be like get the f out of my house. And then you are gonna look at her crazy. You gonna get up and leave because you got nothing to do. I mean, you, and you don't want to go to jail. But then it says the other way around. The world is reversed. You snatch the covers out of her off her and say get out of my house. She gonna look at you crazy. And then, what and then you, she's gonna break your stuff. Exactly, and you don't want that. It's try. Oh my god, I remember this one time. I remember, oh yeah, I remember this one time when you was a uh, story time. Story, story time with Uncle Jay. I remember it was this is back in the day in the in San Antonio times when uh, you and Six Pound Baby Jesus was at this restaurant eating, and then um, I remember I broke up with this one girl. I left to go with y'all at Texas Row House. I ate with y'all. Came back as strawberry syrup. Everywhere she uh, she done jumped through my window, put strawberry syrup oh, on the couch. I remember you don't. Oh. I do remember that. And yeah, then she messed your stuff up. She put she put strawberry syrup on that. She put strawberry syrup on my on my flat screen TVs. Man, I, I remember I had to patch up a hole, so I had to I had to leftover silly silly putty. I had leftover silly putty in the closet. I don't know how she climbed up on the on top of the closet. She like this tall. She climbed up there, grabbed it. She put that on my laptop. I had silly putty on my laptop, but the dumb girl didn't know silly putty like gets hard. Yeah, and it so, comes off. And it comes right off. So it was like, that's what happens when you be scorning scorning these women out here. That's when you mess with these nines and tens. This is where I learned, man. You got to mess with these sixes and sevens. That's when you stay safe. Am I right or wrong? Yeah, I, in some ways. See exactly. It's my code now. Nah, my code. My codes don't understand. He see, he's still hooked on these nines and tens. I like what I like. <laughs> that's what you almost lost a pinky toe last time. No, that's right. I'm still here. <laughs> I'm still crossing you up on the course. <laughs> Disrespect. I'm still maintaining enough of my skills. <laughs> Everybody know you got them Gilbert Arenas knees. No. I, w- I went to Europe. I got them fixed in Germany. <laughs> oh. Okay. <laughs> like a mellow ball, uh, no, like a Lonzo ball. But now, uh, comment down below how you feel about this situation. I mean, do you feel like this is what Safari deserves because he should have checked the car facts? I mean, the whole facts first because she done crossed everybody. It's like my co-host; he never checks the uh, the car facts. I almost got burned that time. <laughs> but uh, you got any other Thank words you, on uh, S- Safari? Nah, that's it, man. We we Best we uh, of wishes so far. man stay stay safe my king man Protect stay your safe children. Protect yourself king. But moving on, speaking of one king to another king man, looks what looks like here man we lost a legend, we lost a real one. Everybody, I mean a lot of people don't know man. You know I'm yeah I'm black, but I got my white side too. I listen to other people. I listen outside the box like Backstreet Boys, In Sync, One Direction. No, you didn't. What? I did this. I know one. what I know what your real favorite group was. Who? Ninety eight degrees. Hey, that was fire. Is that the dude that used to go with uh Jessica Simpson? Yes. I told you, man. And then he got his girl stolen by Tony Romo. Then the Dallas disrespect. Cowboys been uh cursed since then. And cursed. The Jessica Simpson curse. <laughs> but sure. nah, man. Back to the story. Speaking yeah, of him. curse, Liam Payne's now deleted Snapchat stories posting an hour before his death. We do got some footage we'll show in a second, but unfortunately it looked like he lost his life. They say he jumped from a hotel balcony. Balcony, excuse me. They don't know if he jumped or if he fell. He was uh, the autopsy showed that he was on a lot of drugs, including what did they say? Pink, pink, that pink, that, that pink, pink powder, a pink powder like Diddy. And oh, because Diddy wanted that pink powder too. You remember? That's ridiculous. That's what he sent Young Miami to go get. Get that pink powder. Exactly. But, um, yeah. Apparently, they've had a lot of incidents in Europe because uh-huh. they have low railings. Um, you know, in a lot of hotels in the United States, like there's no balconies super high up. Like they lock the windows and stuff. But in Europe, they still have balconies. And apparently, mm-hmm. there's a bunch of tourists or celebrities or high level people that party on these balconies and they fall off or think that they can jump from the balcony to the pool and they misgauge it and they just land on straight concrete from like three floors up instead of the pool. 
So I don't know. It seems kind of tricky. Anytime someone falls like this, they always wonder, you know, is this a foul play with someone, you know, doing them dirty? Did they get him drugged up and then push him off or throw him off? Uh, we don't know, but uh, you got you got uh, some things on this coast. I, I most likely think they're gonna re- they're gonna label this as like accidental something that happened because he was uh, he was on a lot of a lot of substances at that time. But I mean, yeah. if you didn't know, if you didn't know Liam Liam Payne, man, Liam Payne came from the popular British uh, British Irish group uh, One Direction. British Irish. The British Irish. Some of them was Irish. You got it. Uh, the British Irish group One Direction. I mean, a group that happened back in 2010 <laughs> to 2015. I mean, they really ain't last. Last that they ain't really last that long, but it's a boy group. And you know, they went huge. So I remember, like they were on the morning shows yes. and everything. Like that's how big they were. Like they were on Good Morning America and stuff. They was, I mean, they was everywhere. I mean, they was everywhere. Uh, I mean, they did a lot of touring together. They did. They dropped a lot of albums. They dropped at least five albums. I mean, the first album they dropped was in two thousand. I think twelve was all was uh all well, up all night. Then the last album they dropped was two thousand fifteen. Was made in uh May in the AM. <clears throat> but I mean, they didn't make another album since then. Because yeah, you know, they broke up. I mean, some people saying it's the drugs. It, it's the K S. The what? The K sex. Oh, that's what happened. Because you know, some alleged. We're gonna talk about that later. Oh, it's the meltdown. Is, my co is in deep. I mean, I, I mean, deep is. I mean, I'm in mean, deep with this story, man. We gonna play this video of his last hours before he took his fatal jump. And then we gonna come back and I'm gonna tell you more about his story, man. Why the group broke up, um, his love life, everything you wanna know, man. Let's go. Morning, everybody. Here's a little video of me. It's rude to put hats on the table. Sorry. Is it your hat? Yeah. Children. It's a lovely day here in Argentina. This is the breakfast table. I'm just eating an orange. Just enjoying coffee and breakfast, even though it's like 1 p.m. Literally, we sleep in every day until at least 12. We're such losers. (gasps) No. No? It's a nice area in Argentina. I ain't never, I, you know, I've never really heard people say I want to go to Argentina. It's always like Turkey and goes. My hair's a bit cool. <laughs> What'd you say, Coast? Turds and Caicos? Turkey and Caicos? Why you got your hair like that, co-host? I do want to take off my hat. This is a little bit longer. Here, 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 here. Hey, we better not get no strike about this. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this guy's trying to get us a band. Exactly, man. Liam Payne, R.I.P. Liam Payne and all that. I love you, but God, I ain't, I ain't trying to take no L like that. I got a family to feed. We got to pay Angel Reese, uh, Angel Reese rent. God, are they still playing his music? Cause. All right, P. You man. So you got terrible. a lot of fans. I mean, One Direction is huge. There you go. Room is not fun. I was worried how far my rock bottom was going to be. Where's rock bottom for me? And you would never have seen it. I'm very good at hiding it. No one would have ever seen it. But rock bottom, it, I, I, I mean, I don't even know if I hit it yet. I was wondering who that was. Yeah, they said when he was in the lobby, the fans uh, shielded him for privacy because there's a lot of paparazzi. Oh, man, that's sad. I mean, this whole situation is sad, man. I've been doing tons and tons of research on it. So I'm going to tell you, I'm going to just basically, I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to tell you what happened. Then I'm going to tell you about his past. 
and then we gonna bring it all together. We gonna come up with our own assumption. But I mean, so basically, what happened is this: uh, this trip he took to Argentina. He took it with his girlfriend. The trip was only supposed to last uh, five days, but it lasted longer because Liam wanted to stay longer. But his girlfriend said, like his girlfriend said, I don't like to stay in places for very long, um, very long of times. So after a while, she it got was nice for that. I it was. It. I mean, after a while, she got bored and she wanted to leave, so she left. That's what she's saying. But, I mean, I feel like they got an argument. That's why she leave because you ain't going to just leave your man like that. But that's that's no, neither here nor there. Facts. So, he was, so, basically, she left. He's still in the hotel. Uh, I mean, it's people's. It's people, uh, if you look through articles and everything, it's people saying that he was going up and down in the lobby. He wasn't just in the hotel room. He was going up and down in the lobby. It was times where he was just sitting down in the lobby, um, just laying out on the couch on his laptop, and then everybody knew he was him on his laptop because he had his uh, he had his accessibility on, with like for hearing people. Oh yeah. So he yeah, had yeah. hearing problems. So like it speaks out loud. So everything you do, like oh left, right, it said everything. Yeah. So she was like, the lady was like, I can tell that uh, that Liam was just trying to get attention because everything he was doing, he was just trying to get attention for it, like trying to get people to walk up to him and say, I know you, because that's the energy, like the energy and type of vibe he was giving off and. And she said, so she gave him attention. She was uh, walking around with him throughout the day, throughout the hotel. And then at uh, one moment, she left. Uh, she left uh, She left and went with her friends. And then next thing you know, that's where the hotel people call the cops. They're saying, like, oh, this is person here. He seems like he's on drugs and he's on uh, out, all drunk and everything. And when he's, Sometimes he's passed out. And then when he wakes up, he's breaking things. So that's why like, you have the TMZ photo of like, the TV getting broken. You got like candle wax, aluminum foil everywhere, box of, uh, boxes oh, of soap. And, they, and I did see a thing where uh-huh. they thought that the uh, employees there smuggled in the drugs yeah it's like it looked like that the he had gotten the drugs the drugs excuse me from a it would like make a sense. Dove soap box but yeah. there was no soap in it it looks like they that's just like what they put it in what they put it in it makes sense i mean you in argentina you're not from argentina even though you're gonna ask the people that work there the locals they're gonna know exactly and you a celebrity so i mean somebody's gonna give it, it to it you up. so i mean they hooked it up i mean he was on he and he's on that pink and supposedly the pink the pink uh the Stink. pink pink stuff is basically like uh you know on get him to the greek yeah. How Diddy had the Jeffrey, and the Jeffrey's like all the stuff. It's basically like that. It's like ketamine. It's, it's like a concoction, a whole bunch of stuff. And uh, he was basically doing that, and that's what they're saying. Some people saying that he uh, he just took a jump. He took a jump, fell I over. I could see him being upset, getting in an argument. His girl being so annoyed uh-huh. at the argument, seeing bo- so bad the girl is leaving. And this is all speculation, but mm-hmm. her leaving and him being like, you know what? Screw her. I'm still going to have a good time. Okay. Even though she wants to leave, I'm gonna, you know, go hard and him party and go crazy and be like, She don't believe in me. Well look what I can do. I'm gonna jump into this pool and then, and then he could have you know, who knows, he could have not had shoes on and go to like launch himself uh-huh. and like you know, get you know, where people get like no grip and they like fall mm-hmm. and then just fall straight down. True, is you got that and on top of that, pile this on top of it. Or you, you could even been thinking about doing it and just leaned on the balcony and just fell over. True that, and then on, on and then on top of that, add this: using the boy group, a popular boy group, like you said, One Direction is huge. They break up in 2015. People have been talking about uh, making a reunion tour, doing that, doing things again. And uh, I mean, some people were with it, some people not with it. Like uh, some people, some what of the, it, what's the other dude's members. Name, Zane? Yeah, Zane's, Zane's not never with, with nothing. He hates it. He yeah, hates he, everyone. Zane hates them all. He feels like they're all. Fa- he feels like a lot of them are fake. He never really made friends in the group like that. I mean, you know, Harry. Harry Styles and Louis I mean him they 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 had basically allegedly I was reading it I was reading it they had a little um a little issue going on where I'm gonna let y'all I'm gonna let y'all put two and two together and basically they in 2015 basically uh they moved in together got an apartment together moved in then suddenly broke then suddenly moved out once they moved out they wouldn't do shows together it was uh, basically like in 2013 they wouldn't do shows together they wouldn't perform a new album they had to basically like force them to be together in order to do the whole album i'm like what will make two people not wanna do an album together what would make them just have an apartment just break basically just leave the apartment say f the lease and go their separate ways and then boom, out of nowhere, that's when you seen they was mad about the uh, euphoria. Euphoria made a scene where like Harry, uh, basically Harry Styles was hugging up on a man. He said it was him. Harry Styles hasn't come out saying basically he goes both ways. He's just oh. quiet about it. The other dudes always say like I'm straight, I'm straight, I'm straight. Yeah. 
Yeah. So I mean, he had that situation. So back to Allegedly. what I was saying. So you had the group. The group had that situation. Mm-hmm. They broke up. Uh, Liam, he wants to be back in the group. He's going to basically these so people show these are other members solo shows, trying to get attention, trying to talk to him. They it's not it's not working out. Nobody wants to get back in the group. His solo career is it's okay. He did a song with Quavo. It's all right, but it ain't like really seven years ago. Exactly, it ain't really up there, up there. So I mean, I mean, basically, if you live in your highlight, if your high life was with the group, you want to do that, but you can't do that. Uh, you got the it's drug like, situation, you got the girlfriend situation. It sucks when it's like a big group, because a lot of times, like there'll be like a top three, four members. If yeah. it's like a five or a seven group person or four or something, like usually the if the you know depending if it's smaller, maybe like two, mm-hmm. but if it's bigger, maybe three or four. And if you're not in, like, the people's favorites, man, it's like you're nothing without the group because you were kind of, like, you know, eating off the group. Mm -hmm. And you ain't really got it what it takes to eat off your own. So that's crazy. It is crazy. I mean, it was crazy. It's the last last things he said to this one person that was in the hotel where he told the person that I used to be in a boy boy group, but that's why I'm fucked up. And then, that, and then she said she she said she can't. He probably misses the good times, man. They were on top of the world, like they, that's they, how it they is. They came from Europe. They were from England, right? Mm-hmm. And they just were killing some, it. Yeah. They, they, like some people compared them, were comparing them to the Beatles, like with the type of hype they had, because they were making like, uh, like uh, teenage, like the teenage girl scene, like go crazy. Basically, I mean, yeah, like you said, mm-hmm. I mean, and that's what I said. That's what I always say. Like, if I ever got rich and famous, if I had to pick it, if, I, if you were, and you comment down, y'all comment down below too. If you ever had a point in your life where you can be famous, like what age range would you want to be famous in? I would never want to be famous in my earlier years, like my age no. twelve to to twenty or whatever it is. I don't. That's like the worst time because they never like it's a lot Can't of them. They no just life. don't have no life. A lot of them don't make it out, or they end up all crazy and just end up. End up like the dudes off of uh, the Nickelodeon stuff. Oh Shit. yeah, like everyone that was on all that, got, all got messed up. It's a lot, especially of... like uh, what was the girl? The which one? The uh, Amanda Bynes. Yeah, Amanda Bynes. Amanda Bynes she got messed crazy. up, or Drake Bell. Drake Bell did this whole situation. Yep. I mean, it's a lot. It's a lot of. It's a lot of kids celebrities. I mean, only one I can really think made it out was Low Bow Wow. Come on now. That's because you're... But he got, beat up by, he got beat up by his girlfriend, so, I mean, I don't know if that really... That's terrible. Yeah. Mm. I don't know if that's really old. But R.I.P. to Liam, uh, I wasn't, you know, I was I was too old and uh, not in the boy bands to check yeah, out. Yeah, 2010 <laughs> to 15, I was listening to Gucci Man. Say what? I was listening to Gucci Man and 36 Mafia, 2010 to 15. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That was, like, that was uh, Gucci, Brick Squad. Chief Key. Chopped and Screw, 36 Mafia, yeah. Yo Gotti, uh, I mean... Uh, I mean, Dolph. Uh, uh, some Dolph. I mean, it was a lot of stuff. I wasn't really listening to One Direction, Future. but I mean, once they said it was One Direction, once it, once they compared it to like NSYNC and the Backstreet Boys, you already know they, they were like. The, I think they're like one of the only ones at that time because like yeah. when they came out, all that stuff. Had I mean, passed. no, they, they had other people too. They uh, it's like all the boy band stuff died out. Like uh, when I was like late elementary, early middle school, they opened like, up for a boy band before. I think like One Crush or Crush. Um, it's like yeah, they opened up for like Crush or something like that, and like they, they became they were so popular. They opened up for them, they were so popular. They ended up having to split the show in half, so they rotated like this person closed and this person closed. Because mm. I mean, One Direction got that big. It's crazy that uh, Simon, uh, he's yeah, he took he, it from uh, he took it from uh, American Idol, then he took it back overseas to make X, and then yeah. basically did this. I mean, that's what a lot of people. That's what a lot of them do. They just copycat. A lot of things just copycats of others. Yeah, people even try to copy us. Exactly, That's but I mean, R.I.P. Liam, you yeah, comment down below your favorite One Direction song, also comment down R.I.P., and also if you're watching this, how would you say on 1080p clip channel? Uh, if you're watching this on TFTC Clips, you're watching it in 720p to get the full 1080p HD experience, you need to go to Tales from the Crib where you get it first, so make sure you're subscribed to Tales from the Crib, but uh, well, let's go ahead and move to the next topic. Ooh, you already know, man. It's October, so you already know what that means. It's hottie wing time. It's Megan Thee Stallion favorite holiday time. Just like Mariah Carey got a uh, ex for Christmas. Uh, it's man. already been taken. It's Wapsober, baby. Shout oh out God. if you know who the real Wapster is. Shout out to Wap. Oh God, it's so horrible. So if you didn't know me, uh, Megan Thee Stallion around this time always has something coming up. I mean, I checked on YouTube. She had the whole. I mean, back in the day, she had the whole hot, hot, the Heidi Wing uh, episodes on YouTube. It's like three episodes. Heidi Wing. 
Yeah, it was three episodes on YouTube, five minutes long. With basically Megan Thee Stallion, Pi. She was basically basically like Buffy the Vampire Slayer, trying to uh, save the world from all the f boys. That's what she called them. Instead of vampires, it was fuck boys. God dang, Cole. I'm saying what she what she called him in the thing. You're quoting her. I'm just I'm just quoting. I can't quote. I can't quote. Cool. Uh, but yeah, exactly. Okay. So I mean, so she did that back in the days. Uh, I mean, she also got some more stuff coming on, coming up. I'm gonna talk about that, but let me tell you the biggest thing she got. Amazon. Uh, I know the biggest thing she got. Pause. Amazon. Was well, she in Sierra? What she got? She got junk in the trunk. Horrible. <laughs> Horrible. So looks like here, Amazon Prime is giving my girl her own documentary coming out October 31st. Megan Thee Stallion opens up about her, the aftermath of the Tory Lane shooting in the toilet for a documentary. I was definitely getting a little to play. Oh, I was just going to say, it's crazy about the whole Tory Lane situation. Because I'm not really a Tory Lane's fans, but through the evidence and what was seen, it honestly looks like that it may have not been him. But Megan's just been in the gym so much. Maybe guilty to me. Let's play the video. I've decided that I am going to cancel all of my shows. I'm not having fun right now. And I don't want to do it. And I feel like, how could I be making a stallion and I'm not having fun? Music Ooh. has always been in my life. I wouldn't be here without my mom. Mom, so. mama was like a gangster rapper. That's pretty cool. I was like, when I get older, I really want to be like her. That's when I really started creating, making it Italian. I'm a savage. Hey. That was when I was my happiest. And then my mama, she just passed. And I'm like, I'm in shambles. I think I really forgot who I was. And when life started getting crazy, I didn't have her. Hip hop star Megan Thee Stallion said that she was the victim Start of a party. shooting. That's when I started getting the backlash. The shooting, the betrayal. I was definitely getting a little too engulfed in social media. Everybody hates me. I had really had like a real breakdown. I think Megan Thee Stallion is trying to She's trying to protect convert that Megan in this situation. And it's time for Make that part for in the movie where no, rewrite the narrative. I get up off my ass and Re- revisionist history. I'll do something about it. I want people to understand how this has affected me. I want people to see how I feel. You can get help. There are people that are willing to listen. We got to holler about it. We got to scream about it. No matter how hard it is to be heard, you have to speak. I've been through so much. I can't give up. She just inspired me to be the fattest bitch ever. Yeah. I love you. I love you. Damn, I be going through shit, but I be getting through shit. Hey. You gotta twerk through the pain. Bang, bang, bang. Watch this. In her own words. Are shorts required to watch this documentary? You're disgusting. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Let's see, uh, uh, let's see Mr. Baby Oil. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Nah, but uh, before I was rudely interrupted by my perverted co-host. Nah, but uh, I mean, so basically what's going on, you see it here. She has a documentary coming. She's going to be talking about her mom. I didn't know her mom. Her mom, I found this out too. Her mom passed away. Then two weeks later, her grandma, uh, grand, great grandma, great grandma passed away, which is just horrible. Oh, yeah. I was supposed to say something, but I'm not going to say it. You're horrible. And then the fact that, I mean, the fact that she got shot by the whole Tory Lane situation, do you feel like people are ever going to let that down from her because i mean i remember she no, said i, I don't want to like put no people, black man in jail i feel she, like the people that are against her are going to stay against her no matter what she do but i feel like her fans stayed her fans but i think mm-hmm. as far as the middle goes the middle has started to lean toward toward accepting her back i feel like that the tory fans are kind of the majority in like going down on her but like i said she just stayed in the gym and kept putting out fire visuals Doing international music, so Facts. she got popular more worldwide. So she really like had a good plan uh, to combat this and come back and get back in the spotlight and kind of win people over. Where she has probably like a sixty forty percent 
split of people that like her versus hate her. I can see that. I can see that. I mean, if you didn't know her last album, her last album drop, um, that that dropped like, it was like sixty four k first week sales. She's doing good. She's doing good. But Gorilla Glo- just uh, broke the record, right? Yeah, we like sixty for this year. For this year, sixty eight to sixty nine k Gorilla drop. I think sixty nine. But Megan Thee Stallion is gonna drop again on the twenty fifth of this month. It's gonna be Act Two. She's gonna drop another. But it may be a deluxe, so it may just be a couple more songs added. Cause you know how deluxe is. It's only they only got like, like three to seven. Three to seven songs, or it may be they, they may swipe the whole thing, may get a whole B side. So who knows? I mean, who knows what she gonna do? But right now, also she has a a party coming up, the Halloween, the Halloween party coming up October thirty first in Chicago. Don't worry, cause I checked it out. It's sold out. We can't go. I'm going. It's downtown. I'm I just mean, playing the you don't get us in. So. You know, you got your Chicago people. Yeah, I'll tap in. I'll tap in with my bros. When, when, you're, when you're connected to the streets, coach. <laughs> You are connected to the streets. (laughs) I connected to. I am connected to. I am the streets. I'm just kidding. Nah, but I mean, I feel the same. I feel the same way too. I mean, this is it's like a it's like a sixty a sixty forty split. Like more people are starting to like Megan again, but at the same time, I mean, I don't know because the the BT Awards came up. She was nominated a bunch of times. She ain't win no awards. So I mean, I don't. She's nominated at least. I mean that's true, but she you know she always sweeping up, she always sweeping up awards and always getting all that. But I feel like this documentary, she's trying to Kardashian the moment. What oh I yeah, mean, what you mean? What I, what I mean by that is the Kardashians have drama uh-huh. and they never answer it publicly; they just straight up ignore it. And then their show comes out like a few months to six months later, and they address it during their show. Like y'all, everyone's saying this, but this is what really happened. And you could be like, you're straight up lying, but that's just like they just make that their truth. You and you and can't. I feel like Meg Thee Stallion is gonna do that with this documentary. Mm. She's like, "This is what really happened," and da 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 da. So that's what that is the truth and end. She would have the whole documentary about it. Yeah, like, you know, because she ain't said nothing the whole time. She's been quiet about the situation. So she's gonna say everything in the documentary, and it's gonna be in her light, in her way, in every way she wants it to look. True, and Tory Lanez can't rebuttal when it because he sentenced he sentenced he sentenced to ten years right now, yeah. basically in jail. So. And then she's gonna highlight all the people that agree with her and never show any of the. You think she's talking about her stuff. giving a uh, sloppy toppy to Blueface? You are crazy. This is that's what his mama said. I'm just saying, your Blueface mama said. You know, Blueface mama messy. It's, she, she a messy bestie. But, but she more messy than my co-host. But the question Jeff. is, cause does she lie? Exactly. So I mean, I oh, don't I know. know who Megan lies on. Huh? Ooh, I mean, you think she'll talk about horrible who? You what did Nicki Minaj say? Oh. <laughs> lying on your dead mama. On your dead mama. Lying on your dead mama. I'm going down. Oh, I wonder if she's... I'm going to hell. I wonder if she's going to talk about Nicki. I don't think she's going to talk about Nicki Minaj throughout this, throughout this documentary right now. I don't all. hate Made the Stallion, but we know. We just have opinions on things. This podcast. I did see how people were talking about she how... Uh, I did see how people were talking about, oh, yeah, how Gorilla sold 69K and... Uh, and Megan Thee Stallion so uh, 64k and they was like oh man that's crazy how how you to open an act and you sell more than the main act cause you sell more cause you remember they were on tour together oh yeah, yeah. and she sold more than her uh, she, uh, Gorilla sold more than Megan Thee Stallion even though that don't care I mean opening act beater record sales that's pretty that's pretty crazy and we mean it, but, that would be like uh, like who would open for Drake Kendrick <laughs> <laughs> Kendrick Lamar fans from the kitchen. Stay from the kitchen. Uh, man, you may forget. But I mean, everybody's saying, like, I mean, this is just, but a lot of other people are saying, like, the barbs, they're just laughing, saying, I mean, y'all really the giving barbs, props to 64K, 69K? Like, y'all is no, I mean, which is true. Y'all ain't nowhere close to Nicki Minaj. Nicki's 300K. Off Maybe the, nowadays she's in the hundreds and something. The high it seems like It seems like no one, like, does numbers like people used to, especially with, like, Streaming has to be like a thousand streams equaling like one physical copy uh, value. So it's like it's crazy now. They said the Gorilla album came with uh with with additions. Like if you bought the album, it came with a shirt and everything. So they brought that back. So I mean, they said that's a well, lot. No, that's of how you get a physical copy sale. That's how they're doing it now. Yeah, they're trying to bundle it up. They, I remember they, they stopped it. Remember when Travis Scott did it? Yeah. They stopped it, but then I guess they're starting to back up. Well, now like a lot of them will do it. Like, oh, you can get like a vinyl and a T-shirt, and since vinyl's technically a form of music, it's a physical sale of that music. So oh, that's, like, that's why everyone does vinyls now because it's like a physical version of the album that people could buy, and a hundred percent counts. Some of the other stuff where you get like a free digital version that's mm-hmm. kind of iffy. They sometimes do, sometimes don't, but that's why they'll sell like. 
oh, we're going to do a special press of this vinyl. Mm. I got some cheap key vinyls. I remember that. And you got some like, XG vinyls coming yep. up. I mean, that, that, is, that is smart. I mean, I didn't think about that. I thought since CDs was going away and uh, people wasn't using that no more, that was an old concept. People were not that doing that. Back. But vinyls, vinyls is another way. I mean, it's still a CD. But vinyls I'm, kind of go up and down. They never really go away. There's always like a cult people like, because like, DJs there's always, always people that had vinyls like my whole life that I knew, like random people that had vinyls. And it's like people go in and out of it. Shout out, shout out if you're a vinyl lover. But, um... Me, uh, but comment that. down below how y'all feel about this whole Megan and Stallion documentary that's be- that's coming out on Amazon Prime. Will y'all be watching it? We watching it. Uh, Are you be watching it with the volume on or off, regular speed or slow motion? Comment down below. We need holy water. <laughs> I'm just kidding, co-host. You can't make jokes on a podcast. What does the world come to when you can't make <laughs> jokes on a podcast? The whole podcast is about jokes. I'm supposed to joke all day, every day, and then you tell me I need a bit get the hose on myself. I'm gonna put the hose on you. I'm gonna give you a strike. <laughs> but speaking of giving the strike, man, this next topic right here. Say so he tired of it. Tired of you, my dog Gucci man. You got it. Gucci Man is releasing uh, uh, all of his artists, 1017 artists, except Pooh Shice and Fujiano. He made the decision after looking at his profit and loss statements. Well, he ain't been pushing nobody. No one's been putting out projects under 1017. So Big Walk Dog ain't dropping? That's crazy that he dropped Big Walk Dog. <laughs> he's the only one. Because like, he's done something in the, like, he's done a couple projects in the last two years, and they've done decent. He's not like a superstar, so they've done like the numbers he's supposed to do. And he gets views on uh, YouTube and stuff, so I think he should at least kept him. But yeah, all the other people that he like promoted them for one song and then never gave him a shout out again and just gave him a chain. This is this is why Waka Flocka left. <laughs> this is why Brick Squad Monopoly is the real ten seventeen and ten set when ten set when Brick uh-huh. Squad when Waka Flocka took all the artists off of the OG ten seventeen. Like who? Like uh, some Duncan. Well, who, who, who the kid in Fran- uh, I, don't, I know Frenchie. I don't know if Slim Duncan was alive. Is that when he, he might have he might have died when it was just only like everyone on Brick Squad? Was that but when he changed he, the Brick Squad Monopoly? Right, Brick Squad Monopoly. It's it's completely different. No affiliation. Waka just wanted to know like this is still Brick Squad, but it's my my Brick Squad, Brick Squad Monopoly that had a uh, Waka Flocka, a uh, Wooda Kid, uh, Frenchie, um, like Ice Burgundy, um, Real Debo. Oh, was um. Tibo Gotti, Dres Deshawn. Was oh, D- yeah, D Dash B O. D Dash B O was was Dres Deshawn. Yeah, that was his name. And his brother, whose brother? Walker Flocker brother. Yeah, Wooda Kid. No, the other one. K O Red. Yeah. I don't R-I-P. know. I don't know if K O Red made it to Brick Squad Monopoly. He might have passed away before that too. Mm. Slim Duncan might have been on Brick Squad Monopoly, but he he I don't think so. I think he passed away before that. I'm pretty sure. Comment down below, did he pass away before R. that? R.I.P. Slim Duncan, man. R.I.P. Duncan, man. But uh-huh. we got a video right here of Wa- of, uh, Walk Flock, of Gucci, man, basically talking about why he dropped these artists. And then also, we're going to show you all the other artists he he has he had, he also dropped. And some more 1017 remember. news. Little Cap the President. Kibo got it. Oh, yeah, Kibo got, got it. it. The real got it. But Kibo got it was signed by with, uh, Walker. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he went over there. Listen, I wanted to make this control. announcement on 1017 yesterday, but I just seen like like my statement, my PNL with all my artists. You know, it's almost like a whole bunch of shakeup, and it's a whole shit show in the industry right now. But when I look at my PNL and me being a businessman, I think that I'm gonna have to release almost all my artists except for Pusha T and Fujiano. This is a decision I didn't want to make. Um, I thought about it. You know what I'm saying? I could keep all of them under the contract. But I said, hey, fuck it. The, let's just make the, you know, the unselfish decision and, you know, let them take their talents elsewhere. So today, you know what I'm saying, I already reached out to all of my artists, you know what I'm saying, from their, to their lawyers and whatever, and let them know that they're free to take their talents elsewhere. And I'm still looking for new talent to pair up with, you know what I'm saying, Pooh and Foo, and that's where I'm going to put my focus, and I just wish them the best. And I just want to let everybody know that because, hey, that's where we at. Hey! 
Oh, yeah. All the artists that he uh they dropped Cinco, Matt Carter, FTO, Set, Big Fizzle, yeah. some other ones. It's hard to read. Small. And then here you go. I mean, here's the other artists. Is, I mean, the ones that everybody else knows. I mean, Pooh Shy is who's serving a uh. Oh, you know, they, it's like dang looking at the list did he release all his artists or did they release themselves <laughs> like what are we talking about I mean, serving eight years big scar passed away and channing passed away fujiano doing five years it's crazy that he's keeping fujiano and uh Pushaisi, and they're both doing like over five years well, I mean, five P years or more push about to get out i think like next year both of them about to get out like next year around the same time hopefully and then uh, time been flying by mm -hmm. But I mean, as soon as you know, as soon as they drop, they're gonna have as hype. He, as soon as he come out, he's gonna be hype. Especially, you know, everyone loves the first day out. Facts. Hot boy West. Hot boy West. He was fire. He was from. He was from Texas. Years. That's crazy. Oh, now my dog. And then like, that K girl, she um, she got dropped. Now she doing. I see. That, I follow her on IG. She that's, uh, under, that's understandable. And she got yeah, she got dropped, and she doing like uh like videos. Like I guess she's doing, she's doing like a lot of random stuff. I don't see Big Scar's name on this list. Big Scar right at the top. Oh yeah, but not Big Scar. Um. Who was that? Who else was I thinking of? Who? But also he had a uh, who rich Pablo Juan. Who who rich Pablo Juan about to get out of the jail after on the Rico charge? Man, I don't Dang. I don't think Hood Rich uh, Hood Rich Pablo was Juan was even really was even yeah, really was like, rep ten seventeen again. And then Rob Boy Rob Ro, I mean, Ro Boy he been dropped like he he was the first one to get like he got signed to Hood the label. He's the first good. one to get dropped. What uh, I like Hood Rich Pablo Juan. Yeah, Hood Rich Pablo Juan go hard. I listened to him for uh, a lot of years. True, but I mean, I don't really think, like, I don't think that you can blow big on ten seventeen if you were under Gucci Man. I mean, unless you, like, Pusha well, said Fujiano, I, I don't really think, like, Fujiano, I don't really believe that he didn't, he blew up before Gucci yeah, Man. Yeah, I'm bringing some screen, but, uh, you know, I was going to talk trash and be like, Gucci ain't supporting no one, but like you said, Shiesty's in, in jail, Big Scar passed away, I remember that, you know, being crazy. Uh, Channing passed away. That also was crazy, and all of a sudden, so that's like that's like your big people right there, and then like Fujiana. So out of your big like four, two were dead and two were serving for and you didn't blow any of them. Sentences. You didn't blow any of them up. Oh no, Pushaisi blew up. Pushaisi was Shiesty, huge when he went into jail. Did he? I mean, but did Pusha, he was like way bigger than Blueface could ever dream. Did being. Blue? Did Pushaisi blow up before? Like, did do you think he would blow up without ten seventeen? Yeah. So uh, see, he didn't. Need, what about Fujiano? Fujiano really he had the baby mama no, song, Mimo but Mimo Six Hundred blew him up. See, oh, I mean, I guess so. But he, he had did the, he did that song with Mimo Six Hundred that did uh, real good. Is that, and then he uh, he had the baby mama song. The baby mama song, you know, the dude that does the podcast that you don't like that I was listening to the Ugly Money podcast. He always press the button like boom, 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 boom. That dude's like, a, uh, like, chode. So him, he does in a, and boom, man, boom, man. Boom and boom. Boom and boom and sign. They basically did a talent show, found, signed Fujiano. Then they passed Fujiano to uh Gucci. to Gucci Man. But he already had the Baby Mama song and all that stuff already done. Man, L they need to they need to bring back L A. to Boom Man. I mean, he still does stuff. I mean, he not he still he's does. He's not rapping like that. Is he, he not rapping. He just doing like show. He he works with the dude that you say you don't care for. Shameful. They were uh, on the same. They were they worked together. I mean, allegedly. I don't know if they still doing it, but they was I'll, working together. I'll talk to him. I'll change that. Horrible. But I mean, with the whole with the whole Gucci man label, I gotta see what it is. So he gonna drive everybody, and then he I said, remember he he turned around and said, "Oh, okay, I'm gonna sign some more people." But it's like, do you want to sign with Gucci? It's almost like a curse in the streets. He needs to sign some with some non street rappers. I feel like if he goes like he needs to go find a Jack Carlo. Like, Gucci, I feel like Gucci just like tries to do too much sometimes or does too little. You don't know if you want this group. Like it's kind of you know they passed away or got mm -hmm. locked up. So that that's like literally half your squad that ha that happened to, and the other half you didn't really put the energy into. So that's kind of your fault. Uh, so you know it's it's, it's kind of weird like that. But then also, you, if you remember, he's like he hasn't. But remember, yet, he tried to sign amigos. He hasn't really done great since like the OG Brick Squad. Like because uh, uh, even like he tried to sign uh, like Chief Keef to an imprint label like mm -hmm. the Ten Seventeen Glow Gang. Instead of with going from GBE, that's when it came out with that uh, that tape. Yeah, yeah, uh, Big Gucci Sosa. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, they yeah that that was a good team. That was the time. I mean, that was the whole time. I mean, you had that. Like Tato and Ball he tried to sign, that. tried to sign uh, Tato. He tried to sign uh, Chief Keith, Migos, uh, uh, Pee Wee Longway. I mean, Young Thug. Young I mean, Thug. Young Thug. Was on, Young Thug 10, was 17 on Thug. That was fire. I mean, the ten seventeen Thug tapes were fire. So he put would out like three or four of them. So would you say is would the Gucci Man? And they made the that one that one tape boy that Young Thug of Gucci Man. Mm-hmm. That was a good tape. I Do think you, that's what it's called. Um, okay, so I, I would say without Gucci Man, you probably wouldn't have had Rich Homie Quan and uh and Young Thug together. And Pee Wee, yeah, because that was like their whole crew. That was their crew. Because remember, I think I think they started messing with Birdman because of Gucci Man. <clears throat> yeah. Around that stuff, so I mean, yeah, if they yeah. didn't. If they would just do their own separate stuff. I mean, you still would have got the Pee Wee Long Way written Young Thug and uh, the Pik- Pikachu song. Pikachu. Uh, uh, top of the world My with Diamonds Pikachu. <laughs> exactly. I mean, you came up with a whole bunch of thug stuff, but I mean, I don't really think I don't know who did Gucci Man blow up. And Channing was fine. R.I.P. R.I.P. But who did who, comment down below? Who did Gucci Man blow, Walker? Did he blow up Walker? Yeah. I well, that. no, but that's crazy because you know it was actually not even Gucci. You know why? Gucci went to jail. True. Walker had just signed, mm-hmm. and he didn't get a chance to get put on yet. And then Gucci went to jail. True, I remember so that. So it was just on Waka. So Waka was like, I need a hit. Lock my CEO up. And then, uh, yeah, he came out with, oh, let's do it. And then it was, you know, a hit after that. He kept on doing hits after hits after that. And, uh, and then, my, shoot, my shooter over there rapping. And then when Gucci got home, they did that. They dropped a tape together, and they were doing music together. And, uh, yeah, they were going crazy. That's and when they found out he's o- still OJ the Juice Man even had a run for a while. True. He ain't blow up. O- did he blow up OJ? OJ. I mean, there was on his. But I mean, OJ like there was on his that, tapes. Yeah, there was like because it was all Brick Squad. True. That's what I'm saying. Like that's like when they had their crew booming with all with all of them. Like they they were really doing things, but you know. And Nicki Minaj. Nicki Minaj. She was hanging out with them, but she was never really Brick Squad. She was like just. Was she was just like a groupie, and like doing her music, and then we'll we're like I mama. guess friends with the. Uh, yeah, because uh, she, she was, uh, Waka Flocka's mom was her manager, mm-hmm. uh, Deborah, uh, and uh, so that's how she knew them. But she was just hanging out with them because they were in the music industry too, and she was, you know, Waka's mom was her manager. But yeah, then she ended up going to Young Money. Yeah, I think okay. So before we move on, what era of Gucci Man is so your I favorite see. Gucci Man? Is it the beginning era, uh, or is it the is it the beginning? Is it when before he? Before or after he went to jail the last time and came out with the six pack and became a clone? No, everything before that was better. He's had some good songs afterwards. He's done a few projects. The projects have been mediocre, but he's had a few songs I've really liked here and there. Mm-hmm. But nothing compares to his old stuff. I'm talking about like his OG stuff, like, uh, um, was it Street Classics? The yeah. one like of his greatest hits of all his like mixtape songs. Uh, that that was really good, and then it's like uh, his first big album. The was it the State versus Radrick Davis? That like, was good. Yeah, that was like, and he had to let Mar- Mariah Carey on the song. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> when he did and, Eminem, uh, he did Wasted with uh, Little Wayne, and with at that time was the uh, biggest song in the world for a long time, like for like a year and a half. I remember that. And uh, yeah, that to me that's like my favorite era when like the State versus Radrick Davis era, and like right after that. I really, I really liked his OG mixtape stuff. It's so cool. Like, what's the one where he's uh, wearing the Bart Simpson chain? That's like really old school footage that we watch like all the time. I'm trying to blame. Three D Gucci three D or no, the Gucci one in jail? D. No, the, it's a video. It's like one from like one of the like hood DVDs. Oh, no pen or pad. <clears throat> Was it no pen no pad or the other one? No, he had another one. He had a couple DVDs. I have seen it before. I mean, but we, I mean, we we can look. You want look it up right now? But I mean, he had another. He had a, he had that one. I remember no pen, no pad. He um, I yeah, it was ahead. one where he was just freestyling on the whole time. Was it what you was the one? The, what you looking for the tape or the DVD? I'm looking for a certain song. A certain song. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about because it was a video. Mm. It's it's one. It's like his oldest song. Well, it wasn't uh. uh hold on, I'll find it. Back from the dead. Uh, it wasn't uh trap back was. No, uh, hold on. Eliminate. It's not eliminate. I know eliminate. It's the one where he's wearing the Bart chain. Which uh, which one? The first one? The, f- the first one? <clears throat> Trap yeah. house. 
Is that what it is, Trap House? Yeah, I think it is Trap House. I don't know. I'm keep keep talking. What I mean, it could be say? it could be Trap House, but I don't know. I mean, God but if I really dang. think about Apple Music has all of them. But I mean, if I really think about it, I mean, if you think about all the other rappers that you had, just Atlanta alone, we're not gonna go out there talk about all the other uh, like TDE and all them people. Yeah, it is. Tra- yeah, just the regular Trap House song. I was God dang, I couldn't remember. You know. I have the biggest of brain farts, but yeah, I love that. Exactly, but I mean, just like with, but I mean, unlike Jeezy had hard a, to kill in 06, Trap House in 05, uh-huh. back to the Trap House 07, but EA Sports, you had a trap bag through Gucci G- Sosa in 08. You got a whole bunch of stuff. Now, you had to go, you had the big semi, something like that. Man, he has so many tapes. Murder was the case, Riding on the Wall, that was fire. Uh, the Burr Print, <clears throat> fire. Yeah, the state for Tragic Davis, Burr Print Two, Mister Zone Six. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like around, like Gucci around like two thousand nine, two thousand ten, two thousand eleven was my favorite. Like the Mister Zone Six mixtape, jewel, uh, jewelry uh, selection, Ferrari music, uh, the Appeal. I mean, I didn't really care for the Appeal. But the Appeal wasn't as good. Gucci Two Time is one of my favorite mixtapes of all time. Uh, Brick Squad Mafia. I remember that one. The Return of Mister Zone Six. Mm-hmm. 458 uh, Talia. That's what him and Waka Flocka. The Ferrari Boys? Yeah, Ferrari Boys was a CD. Mm-hmm. 458 Italia was just a mixtape before the CD. Um, Riding on the Wall 2 was really good. Uh, I'm Up in 2012. Trap God in 2012. That, Wager, that, was, that, that girl Wager right there? Yeah, he did a... What is that, that? Vicky? Uh, Beto. What's that? Gucci Man and V Nasty. Yeah, V Nasty. Yeah, he did a whole table with her trap back too. East Atlanta to Memphis. Oh, the Gucci he did the Dolph trap house three. Yeah, like Gucci man yeah, he, from he, from like two th- really. Yeah, Gucci, prepared Dolph. I'll, I'll say Gucci he man from like twenty seven to twenty fifteen was like one of the most legendary runs I've ever seen. Trap house three in twenty thirteen. World War one, uh, three. I remember that one. Gasoline. Molly gasoline. Molly. Yeah. Diary of a Trap God was amazing in twenty thirteen. Trust God F twelve was amazing. The State vs. Tragic Davis 2. Uh, young Young Thugamane, mm-hmm. LaFleur. Yep. He had a couple the of them. Purple album. Yeah, 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 Trap House one? 4. I ain't really care for the purple one. No, Trap House 4 was real good. The Odd Father. That was good. Gucci vs. Guwap. That was good. Trap God 3. That was great. Rich Homie Kwan. All the Trap Guys was fire. He did a whole tape with Rich Homie Kwan. Mm-hmm. He did a whole tape with Thug. He did a whole tape with a bunch of people. Yeah. Oh yeah. Lunch, dinner, and breakfast. I remember that one. Trap House Five. King Gucci. I remember that one. Remember Trapology. I remember that one. Uh, East Atlanta Santa One and Two, and then he started. Yeah, like, when he got back out again, that was like in 2016. That, everybody that was looking. Like October. Everyone looking. Yeah. 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 I so I, yeah. So I would probably say like Gucci. Yeah, from like his best, me- my favorite music is probably the 2010 to 2015. Yeah, 2010. Yeah, it had to be around that time. The same, same thing. But y'all coming down below. Really, 20, really 2005 to 2015, to be honest. Yeah, I, com- I really like his original stuff. Comment down below, y'all yeah, favorite era of Gucci Man. Yeah, oh, y'all yeah, favorite song. And how y'all, and which, uh, how y'all feel about these artists, him dropping all his artists? But moving on, next topic here, man. We got my girl Kiki Palmer. Ooh, Kiki. Ooh. Kiki Palmer opens up about living under her means after filing for bankruptcy at 18. Instead of Gucci, I'm wearing Zara. I got a Toyota in my driveway right now. So, if, if, oh, so I was about to say, she's so, lying. Zara wasn't around when she was 18. Horrible. So, I mean, if you didn't know, I mean, so be. so uh, Kiki Palmer went to the Building Wealth Today for the Mara Financial Literacy Event Group event in uh in chicago it's like everything's going to chicago everybody wants to be in chicago uh but i mean but nobody wants to live there but uh but so so she went to this event and here's what she like spilled like she talked about basically her life and how she grew up her ups and downs like she said here is like if i got 10k in the bank then my house will be 500 a month. i don't know where you're gonna live at with 500 out of house but i mean i understand what you're talking about we ain't finna make the math. She rented a room from a friend. I don't know, but she's like, "That's how I. That's that's how under she I did. mean." So if I want to invest my business, then the the material things that I have currently, I have to take a short uh, take a, a sort back. Instead of wearing Gucci, I'm wearing Zara. So, I mean, with this whole situation. So if you didn't know, 
I and I didn't know it either. So back when she first started, her first movie, her first main role, I mean main role, first movie that she did was the whole um, Barbershop Two. Yeah. So she's in Barbershop Two. She did that. And then she turned around she and did the uh, yeah. Then she did the Killer in the B. That was in '06. Oh, you love that movie. And then at uh, at age twelve years old, check this out. At age twelve years old, that's when everybody decided that her mom, her dad, and her siblings. Her mom and dad was going to stop working, and all her siblings, uh, she's going to pay for everybody. She's going to pay the rent. She's going to take care of all this stuff. She'll so, be the breadwinner of the family, and, like, the family's job was basically to support her? Basic, yeah, basically help her that's with her career, support her. So that's what happened. That's why she ended up filing for bankruptcy at age 18 because she was taking care of all that stuff as a kid, and she just didn't have it. I mean, it's a lot of stress. It's a lot of stress to put on a 12-year-old to basically have to do all, pay for all this stuff, and you don't got no childhood. Like you can't, you can't grow up. You can't. Ain't no prom. Ain't no. Uh, I mean, like, we we've covered it before, even with the earlier uh, with uh, these with, child stars with Liam. Child stars really never turn out right. I mean, some do or turn out okay, mm-hmm. but more often than not, is what I'm trying to say. That you see that these people are really affected. Either the industry being crazy, too much pressure that stresses them out and makes them go crazy. Crazy they. You know, turn to turn to drugs or all kinds of stuff. Facts uh, to kind of cope with the life they had to live, and unfortunately, Hollywood has a reputation where a lot of these uh, young people end up being abused, and then they have to kind of live their life with that. And uh, some of them, you know, it makes it difficult for them to be like a normal person or, or uh, kind of have a normal life. Poor Macaulay Culkin. Macaulay Culkin is fine now. What? He is fine. He's, He's doing traumatized. Great. You're gonna be traumatized. <laughs> Pause. <laughs> nah, but uh, so, so I mean, like we were saying. So I mean, yeah, it's it's real crazy for these. Hollywood- you know, maybe if she would stop hanging out with Usher, she would still be married <laughs> and have a whole family unit. I mean, hey, yeah. She also talked about that. She talked about how her having a kid, her having a kid, uh, makes her be more, even more tight with money. Like she doesn't want to spend on frivolous things, but she still spends her money. Like she dropped a half a million dollars on her YouTube page. She has a, a, a the key TV. Oh, I'm like getting that set up. No, God, she, has, dang, she, she doesn't up. know how to save money. She has a TV network, like basically like like us. Yeah, but more. TFTC Productions. She has the podcast. Tales from the crib. <laughs> TFTC clips, crib reactions, world renowned crib reactions, and TFTC gaming. Exactly. So, so she has a podcast that she does. She has a whole bunch of people that are always on it. Also, uh, what she does is you when you go to her YouTube page, she's always doing a whole bunch of animated stuff. I mean, I, I think she's on a lot of commercials. She does. She's still working out there. She's still. She's still getting to the paper. She's still getting to the bag. I mean, only only bad part is that she uh, she's not with her dude no more. So now she's a single mom. Oh yeah, but uh, but I mean, besides that, yeah, single can, mama drama, <laughs> horrible. But besides that, I mean, she's still out there working. I mean, I like how she's doing that. Like, I like how some people don't. Uh, it's not all uh, like you see how some people in Hollywood they all about the glitz and glamour, glitz. and then uh, you see they uh, they buying Gucci, they buying Louis and all this other stuff. Then you find out like ten years, like five years later, they getting sued by like they uh, the jewel. Like, oh yeah, this one's missing on payments. You're like, what? What's crazy is when people will have their parents as manager and find out that their parents have been like stealing money or doing things wrong. And That's then, crazy. And, and then they got to sue their parent. I think uh, what Justin Timberlake had to do that. There's a bunch of people that were like child stars where their parents managed their kind of estate or like business. I Britney guess Spears. Remember Britney the whole, Spears? Yeah, debacle. The whole Britney Spears. Yeah, the whole Britney Spears debacle. How? Well, what uh, was that called? That they they had like power of attorney, but like what is that called? Uh, she had a conservatorship. Yeah, conservative. They had yeah. conservatorship. I'm a part over of one for my co-hosts. We nah, they didn't. Yeah, look after him. yeah, they had conservatorship over that because she wasn't. Uh, she basically wasn't um, taking care of herself, right? That's what they were saying. But she said, "Nah, that was fine." But they was using that to take over her. But I mean, you see, with Kiki Palmer, at least she's not like that. Like she's not. You don't see her on drugs. Uh, you don't see her I like see her half door. naked at the Usher show. What are you talking about, Coz? Sure. What are you talking about? She's wearing a see-through dress while she was a married woman at a concert, and then she's letting this man dance on her. And she made him Usher baby. She made I don't want my wife dancing on Usher baby. So uh, your she wife get pregnant. Your wife can't stay late to the Usher concert. Help him, help Shoot. him fold up the chairs. You know what? I would have done one better. I was like, we're getting a babysitter, and I'm going with you because Usher gonna mess around and catch an uppercut. Sounds really controlling. Yeah, I'm just saying. it's called being a man. You can stay <laughs> over there and be a woman. <laughs> you should be her. <laughs> sounds like yours, does, co-host. Oh, You're scared. 
If you're nah. scared co-host, it's all right. We'll take you to church. Horrible. But comment down below how y'all feel about Kiki Palmer basically saying that she, uh, she's basically living Kiki under Kiki Palmer her... or Meg Thee Stallion? You know, Which one like... you taking out? How to wear? To dinner. You got a choice. You're going on a dating show and like, all right, we got two slots left. You can either go on a blind date with Kiki Palmer or Meg Thee Stallion. Or Tyler. Tyler, the creator? <laughs> no, the singer. What's her name? Oh, nah. Uh, I, nah, I go Kiki Palmer. She's you go funny. Kiki Palmer? Yeah, she's funny. I go, she's funny. Because he's a Tory fan. He's like, I want to be seen dead with Make This Stallion. We don't support Tory. We don't support Megan Stallion over here on this clip. Uh, Other clip we do. This clip right here. You're going to support her documentary. Facts. Uh, we watching that. But, hey, man, speaking of documentary, let's document this couch announcement. Coles. That's DJ right. Gummy Bear. Welcome to the Halftime Show Tales from the Crib We let you know what's going on on the channel What's new and what you can expect from us We are doing a podcast every week We do about the current events, sports, and all kinds of stuff And we clip it out to TFTC Clips So if you don't have time to watch the whole show You can head on over to TFTC Clips And see your favorite topics Clipped out into shorter segments We also got TFTC Gaming We're playing all kinds of games I'm playing a bunch of Star Wars games, some classic games like Bounty Hunter. Check out my playthrough video just dropped today. My co is killing it in wrestling. I just recorded thousands like four of, of them. views doing these like custom matches, and I got some matches. I was actually looking up, helping you, Coast. I got some matches that people want to see, oh, and I want to see you play out in wrestling. Check that out on TFTC Gaming. Oh, also check out TFTC Sports. We're chilling with our boy, real good underscore Dodi, and we're doing NFL picks and hot topics every week. Uh, my co-host has a narrow lead on me, and somehow we are both kicking the NFL guru's butt. Hey. We are pushing through his wall. <laughs> Because if you're rocking with us, we're rocking with you. Oh, Lord. But let's go ahead and talk about our number one breadwinner, the what channel that makes us happy, Crib Reactions. We're checking out music from all over the world, all kinds of cool stuff. we got almost 12K subs over there. And we've got a Patreon for exclusive content not available on YouTube. The links are in any of the video's descriptions for our Patreon. But we've been checking out Love Bites, which is a metal band. Uh, if you want to rock out, that video is doing really well. Check out XG. We did see them live in concert. It was epic. We got some band cams up there. We got Jenny from Blackpink dropping a video. And Lisa, you know, all of our Lisa videos absolutely kill it. She did Moonlit 4 official performance. And that's got over 4K views. But yeah, check out Kirby Actions if you want to see more of us being funny. Checking out music and movie trailers from any content around the world. Um, anything you got to say about any of our other channels, co hosts? Thank y'all for watching. Thank y'all for subscribing, man. This gaming channel, the fact that you got 350 right now is. Our gaming amazing. channel's randomly been growing. I think it's all your uh, those wrestling videos did. Listen, I, was, got I was carrying the channel for a while, and I was like, dang, like I'm doing all the heavy lifts. And then my coach came out of nowhere, and he's like, I got you. Drop that one that one uh, female fight. Oh, I got a, on no, that's what it is. I got a female fight request. Oh, Lord. I got a couple of shotties I want to see throw down in the ring. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> my, you know what my, I'm talking my about. My gaming channel isn't meant to be a man or whore. Your gaming channel is just like you. You'll be all right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, disrespectful. But speaking of disrespectful, man, looks like here, yeah, man, my dog. DJ got ketchup. Horrible. Looks like my dog, DJ Mustard, is coming out here unscathed. To me, DJ Mustard keeps his luxury cars and homes while ex wife Chanel receives a lump sum, uh, 300, well, not lump sum, he receives 315K spousal support payments and 24K. 24K Monthly child support that's settlement. That's a straight up L. You think it's L? I mean, L. you think so? How much money is this fool making? That's crazy. You think you so? It's probably that they have a few properties. They could probably only do the main property. Mm -hmm. So if it's like, oh, the main house. If I want to keep the house, then I got to give you give you half the value. I so I that. wonder if it, they had like a six hundred thousand dollar house. But knowing that, they probably had something more. I don't know. Who knows? Maybe they have some weird agreement. But three hundred fifteen. For a lump sum, is not that bad. But what is killing me is twenty, almost twenty five thousand dollars a month. That is crazy. Yeah, I think it's like two or three kids. 
It's not much more than one. That's still crazy. Twenty five k. I mean, think like, about they it. I think this man is like dang near like Bill Gates. He got money. I'm surprised he. I didn't think he had money like that. But you seen Safari? Safari's making sixty one k a month. Oh, Safari's doing sixty one k a month. Sixty one k a month. Half he getting seventy five, seventy five, seven hundred fifty k a year. That's Safari. Oh, wait, wait, let me do the exact number. But uh, but I mean, you got you got her making that money. But I mean, but if you think about it like this, they've been together since they was nineteen years old. DJ Must is thirty four now. They uh, they was engaged in two thousand eighteen. So he's paying her a lump sum of three fifteen. Uh huh. And then he's basically paying her two hundred and ninety four thousand dollars a year. And it's broken up into monthly payments of two twenty four point five. And then. So so two, yeah, I said two ninety four a year, three, three years is a mil. Three years? What do you mean? Oh yeah, three years a million dollars. So I mean, your kid, your kids go to eighteen. So eighteen divided by eighteen times. And we don't know the kids' ages. Well, I mean, but most you go to eighteen, you're not passing that. So it's like three years. So if you start from zero, go yeah, all the I mean, way up. I just wanted to see that. that. We're not three doing all that. Five is fifteen. Six six. That's six. What? Six million. Yeah, Six I mean, times three gonna, is it's gonna, uh, it's eighteen. Gonna, it's gonna add up. It's definitely gonna add up. Yeah. So what yeah. did I say? It was here. Yeah, two hundred ninety-four thousand dollars. So you probably pay like six million the kid, seven million the kid total payout. You paying all that? Uh, I mean, that damn, that is a lot. And you paying all that money? I mean, if you put it like that, I mean, she That's may crazy. be winning. Uh, but I mean, like I said, they've been together for a while. They got married in two thousand twenty. Uh, twenty. They do uh two thousand. 22 that's when they separated but he does get a lot he did get several cars he got his he got his Maybach Benz he got his Lambo he got his Escalade Rose Royce Rolls Royce, Rolls Royce. Lambo 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 he got his jet skis kept his properties like one with three properties what one in LA and also what what does he I mean he he, did, he came out he came out pretty good I mean I mean that's still a lot. Money. I just didn't think DJ Mustard was making money like that where he's got to pay a, uh the, I expected maybe the 300k lump sum but they ended up paying close to 300k a year in child support that is wild i mean I, I, feel, I, feel like you, I feel like i hear heard plenty of stories with like 50 cent or other rap art mm-hmm. that are artists not even just djs or music producers and they're paying like five ten bands a month some like people you get play, lucky you pay like four you see safari over here crying about this little full, full band that's what i'm saying <laughs> this fool's gonna take him to the cleaners. <laughs> he's gonna but, be making music for Kendrick forever. Exactly. I mean, he's gonna. He's gonna be like, hey, YG, you know, I can't do your little checks. I need them Kendrick checks. I mean, that's you see Kend- what he's doing. Kendrick's he said he only. Go-to guy. He only doing all Kendrick Lamar. Says, I'm only. I mean, he was, he might have to start changing that up. So working with everybody just besides Kendrick Lamar. YG for honey. Because, I mean, this is a lot. I mean, that is a lot of money to take care of. I mean, but hey, he's going to do it. I haven't really heard anything him talking bad about his kids. Uh, I haven't really heard much bad about him saying about his wife, besides the fact that she says he does, she, uh, she sometimes is a hard book. She, he's sometimes a hard book co parent. He doesn't let us see her kids. Like, she's missed a couple of Christmas. I'm a great co parent. If I had kids, but I don't got no kids. But y'all come, that's enough about this. But comment down below how y'all feel about the whole DJ Mustard situation. Do y'all feel like this is an L? Do you feel like he, I mean, he came out pretty good? Because he, he did get to keep all his cars, all his motorcycles, his uh, jet skis. his, his And he got to keep his uh, all his uh, all his royalties. But speaking of royalties, looks like here this next. Nobody cares about the Mustard. He, that's who's moving on. But uh, <laughs> you just don't like LA artists. But speaking of don't like, man, speaking of people that can't move, move on, we got Ebro saying Uzi would flop and that he would never reach rock star uh, status. And mm-hmm. uh, Ebro was on, I guess, uh, recently and uh, says that he's, Uzi still hasn't become the rock star he said he would. We're still waiting, Uzi. What's mm. going on? You said you were going to be the next Macaulay Culkin. <laughs> Hey, man, we got a, but we got a video right here. Basically, throwback video of DJ uh, of Ebro basically talking. DJ talk, Ebro, uh, got Ebro talking to Uzi. Then you got a flash forward of basically with him at a conference saying, "I told you so." I hope they change. I hope they change. But as I've seen with all you little young motherfuckers yeah. that think you nice, yeah, he is pretty nice. You nice, yeah. I'm good. Y'all get to y'all get to like 27, 28, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and y'all niggas get to struggling, and y'all come, y'all be trying to come back. I'll tell to you find what, that sound. I ain't gonna struggle, bro. 
All right, we're going to see. Oh, we're even... going to see. Oh, you're going to learn. And, and guess what? I'm going to be here. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be totally different, too. Like, I'm I'm going to be a sh all the way around. Actually, let me process. Here's a question for you, bro. Um, what are your thoughts on Uzi's success? I love Uzi, but um, I feel like, you know, he, um, he still hasn't become the rock star and said he would become that. <laughs> <laughs> We're still waiting. You know, because the rock star, unless it maybe I took it literal, but rock stars, the rock stars I knew, they were selling out MetLife Stadium. They can sell out Madison Square Garden eight, ten times. They got hits on the radio everywhere, songs is everywhere. <laughs> So he told me he was going to become a rock star. And I know that interview, how long ago was that interview? I was like, what? Was that six? Six, yeah. Six, so most people that come up to me and talk to me about Uzi Vert now was probably like 10 years old at that time. I was just getting into the internet. It was tight, it was mad that I did that to Uzi Vert. <laughs> and like I said before, time will tell. Yeah. Where you at, my guy? <laughs> oh, so where you at, bro? Oh, why he took it like that? Did he just retire too? Wasn't he just like, yo, I'm tired? I'm done. Nah. Come on, son. You're supposed to be a rock star. Yeah. Bro, you're not even the same vert, bro. You fell off, bro. Bro, you're not the same vert, bro. Love versus the world. It's you versus you. Like, love versus the world is the vert that was OD. Like, you fell off, bro. You're not the same vert. All right, so bet. You fell off, bro. How about that? You fell off. Lil Uzi vert fell off. Lil Uzi vert versus the world. Like, oh, the old money. Oh, money longer. Money longer. And, uh, money. Oh, shit like that. That's the vert I jack. I don't jack. It's, it's, it's look. Right now, it's Lil Uzi versus Lil Uzi. Like, it's you versus yourself, bro. That's fire. It's it you versus CC. <laughs> I mean, I you understand. You think he was messing with him? Or he was messing with him. He, he, tro he always trolling. But, I mean, I understand what he says, you versus you, because I mean, only person stopping Uzi from dropping that more music. It's JT. Nah, I mean. And the City Girls debacle. Could be. I mean, he could I'm be too busy writing her songs, helping her with music. That's why she ain't, nah, he ain't dropping. Nah, that's what Lil Yachty does. I mean, not no more. He, no, nah, no, nah, they broke up. I'm just kidding. But um, a lot of people are saying that that's the reason why Lil Uzi ain't been really dropping tapes like that is because uh, he's basically he he's his biggest critic. Like he um he's scared to drop any music, and on top of that, they don't, they were trying to replace him with Jack Harlow with the whole uh, DJ they Drama did. record label. He on the same they on the same record label. They yeah, replace him with Jack Harlow. I mean, hey, Jack Harlow fell off too. Nah, but I mean, basically, uh, I was checking out the whole little Uzi discography, and I mean, I don't see what everybody's saying. A little Uzi got some hard, some hard tapes. Like I was looking here, the whole tape that's what I'm pulling up. The whole little Uzi vert versus the world came out in 2016. That's what he's, uh, but that's what it's talking about. That was good. The lovers race like too was good. Now and he said he wasn't gonna be still popping the same. I mean, like seven years. Eternal Take was good. I mean, the the pink tape, the one that came out in like 2023, I ain't really care for that one, but he did have a couple. He had that, that banger on it, I Wanna Rock. Okay, let me see. So, yeah. Um, Love Is Rage was awesome in 2015. Mm -hmm. Lil Uzi vs. The World was also epic in 2016. Mm -hmm. uh, the Perfect Love Tape, I actually really liked that, 2016. Love Is Rage uh, 2's 2017 was really good. It was crazy that... Uh, it took him till like 2020. He took three years off and did the uh, eternal uh, take. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Lil, uh, Love vs. the World 2. That one was good. I did like that one. And then Pluto and Baby Pluto. That, that was one. that was still pretty good. That was in 2020 the as well. The whole freestyle tape they, they put together and dropped. Yeah. They could have put more videos to that. That's one thing I realized about Little Uzi. Like, he doesn't drop a lot of videos. He, uh, but you, well, uh, what's crazy is the pink tape was freaking 26 songs. Mm -hmm. I mean, he just put all the songs on and just gave it to everybody. I guess it was, I think it was like a lot of songs was getting leaked, so he just put it on there and just dropped it. He just tried, yeah, because there's like four bonus songs. Because that's one thing you can always Oh, count. he has baby metal on a song. The end. I'm, surprised. I'm not surprised. But I got to react to that. But, uh, I mean, that's what happens with a lot of artists. Like, you can always count on Chief Keef, Little Uzi, or Playboy Cardi songs always getting leaked. Um, oh, it's like on half album music, it has that. That is pretty cool. That is fine. It's like I, an animated. But right, what's his monthly listeners? Right there, the show on yours? No, on Apple it, Music. It, Apple doesn't show that. So on uh, on Spotify, he's averaging like thirty-seven point seven million monthly listeners. His so, biggest songs. Uh, Exhort Two, like mean, when just Diamond. Just Wanna Rock was just twenty twenty-two. That was just two years ago. 
See, I mean, so he, I mean, he is big. So, I mean, his last break was three years. So he's still, I mean, I don't know. But yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure what is he not? He said is like Ebro was saying that like, oh, you know, a rock star for me is like selling out stadiums. Is Lil Uzi not doing stadiums? Like he's not he's selling out full stadiums. I mean, he's not like Drake and um, he's not like Drake and like is Kanye he not West. doing like Madison Square Garden? Nah, he's not. He's not. He's not. He's not, feeling, he's not I, He's not like uh, selling out arena. Madison Square. I got to doing the whole arena. He's probably doing like a quarter of the arena, 75% of you the arena. You think he's doing like theaters? He's definitely doing theaters. He has one Comment of, down below. I thought Lil Uzi Vert might be doing arenas. I, he's, not, he's doing arenas, but it's not for like a full sold out, like fully sold out arenas. Like probably using half the room. Maybe. But then on top of his, but his performances always go off. Like he's not like a born performer, like some of the like the Migos, a Little Wayne. He really like moving around like Tory Lanez is and Travis Scott. But I mean, who do you feel like is the bigger artist, Travis Scott or uh, Little Uzi? Travis Scott. You think so? Yeah, he, his fans are crazy. Travis Scott and Playboy Cardi. Mm. Uh, I do really love the Bean song that he did on the Love vs. World Two. Yeah, the uh, with uh, Chief Keef. Oh, yeah, yeah, you do see him on like that's a lot of things. A lot of times you also see him there. You also see him pop up on like Chief Keef uh, oh, vlogs and everything. Yeah, he's like real cool with Chief Keef. Yeah, well, because he's best friends with uh, Capo, who Chief Keef's best friend, who passed away, brother uh, Doo Wop. Mm. He's he's cool. They're like good friends. He was even on uh, Doo Wop. Shout out Doo Wop. He's dropping another album on Halloween, Woptober. It's like Woptober three. Uh, he's friends with Lil Uzi. I think Lil Uzi was on Woptober one. Uh huh. He had Lil Uzi on one of his like underground mixtapes, which is pretty dope. Mimo so, Six Hundred had a song with uh, Lil Uzi too. Yeah, he remember? did do that random song with uh, Doo Wop. Yeah, he does do like random songs with some people. And you he would did never a guess. song with Mimo Six Hundred too. Remember? I think did he do a song with Doughboy? He might have. He was... likes all the Chicago artists, so he he lo- he loves at that, and he's like. Of course, Lil Uzi loves Chief Keef and G Herbo, and Doo Wop is literally a part of G Herbo's set, and uh, so is Capo. But uh, Capo yeah, was Chief Keef's right hand man. He did uh, Doughboy, Southside, Lil Uzi very busting three years ago. Yeah, he be doing like, ran- like he be doing like ra- random songs. With I like rappers. when Lil Uzi is like more on his drill vibe or more on his Chief Keef vibe. That's my favorite Lil Uzi when he's kind of making like Chief Keef mimic music, like Almighty So One. That's probably. Music. That's probably why he's not as big as um. That's why he's probably not as big as um. Well, it's funny Travis Scott and all them because he's still doing like Dope Boy and and uh do and Wop. No, he always does that stuff on the side, but like yeah, his albums still have like big songs. But like on an album, he'll put like Chief Keef or G Herbo. He's not gonna put the small artists. Oh, he did. Yeah, he did a couple. Songs, but the fact that he did song with G Herbo. Yeah. That's not. G Herbo's yeah. pretty big. No, no. If you're not, he's not even trying to be a rock, not even trying to be a rock star. If oh you're trying God. to be a rock star, you need to be doing songs with like Tyler Perry. I mean, not Tyler Perry. Uh, uh, Taylor Swift. You need to be doing songs with Taylor Swift. Doing songs with like, like Kendrick. Uh, Kendrick no, was on no the bigger Swift than album. that. No, like all the white, all the pop singers, like all the white Eminem. pop singers. Eminem. Do songs. Not Eminem. Eminem, will hate, Eminem hates Lil Uzi. MGK. The rap devil, baby. Nah, MGK not big enough. Oh right. Uh, he just did a rap song. It was pretty good. MGK. People were hating on him. He did a whole he did a whole tape with MGK he did a whole tape with Trippy Red. Yeah, but that was kind of like the rap rock. That was rap was rock. Like cry, cry rap rock. <laughs> just like emo rap rock. But speaking of the emo stuff, man, comment down below how y'all feel about this whole uh, of this whole emo. beef. Do you feel like Ebro need to emotional damage? Do you feel like Ebro need to get off little Uzi nuts or what it is? He was asked the question though. To be fair, it wasn't like he was just bringing him up mm-hmm. on the show and be like, "Hey, you know what? Who I haven't talked about in a while." Who was he said he was gonna still be here, be a rock star, selling out stadiums, and he ain't even dropped no music two years, and I don't think he ain't doing no stadiums. Like where yet? But that's the one thing about being a radio host. If you're a radio host and a good radio host, where like you're always gonna have a job, like you these artists, most of the artists' careers like really is like four or five years, like their prime. Yeah. So if you're a radio person, you're doing that twenty, thirty years. You're be like, oh yeah, we'll see if you're gonna stick around, and they'll be like, hi, look who's still here, me. I'm still talking to all this hall of celebrities. Look, we they wouldn't we wouldn't even let them on the show for free. We could care less now. You know they fell off in five years. I'm still here talking to the the, the biggest stars in the world. True. That's how the radio people are. I mean, that's how I would be too. It kind of, I guess it would kind of go to your head. 
Yeah, I mean, I mean, you're not putting out content where like people are judging you. You're just like interviewing people and stuff. I mean, now people judge uh, Ebro. I mean, because you not like he's over there judging artists and all that stuff. But at the same time, the Breakfast Club oh. is judging Hot 97 because yeah. nobody listens to Hot 97. Well, it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller, and um, nobody listens to him. And also, I forgot. Oh man, got Ebro. You got Rosenberg. Yeah, because Rosenberg Rosenberg is often in the in the news. He's in the because he for does his in opinions news, in news for his opinion. Yeah, he does that. He also does wrestling. So he's a big in wrestling, the wrestling world. So he does a lot of. He has a wrestling podcast. Oh, that's cool. And so he he does a whole bunch. He does a sports podcast too. He does uh, really. A, yeah, he does a football a sports football podcast also. Speaking of football podcast, check out TFTC Sports NFL Weekly Football Picks and Hot Topics. Mm-hmm. We do it every week. We're doing it tomorrow with our boy Real Good Underscore Doty. Make sure you check that out. And the Steelers are back on top. Russell Wilson, you are the savior. Uh, but what else? And move. So, so speaking of savior, speaking of saving, looks like here yeah, Jesse J. Uncle Jesse's gonna have to save our girl Angel bah, Reese. Bah, oh, I'm gonna save her. So it looks like yeah, the Angel Reese is in the news once again. Like you can't, you can't get past it. It's either gonna be Angel Reese, Diddy, or Kanye West, or Kaylin Clark, or Kaylin Clark. They're doing something every week. Either you're gonna love it, or you're gonna hate it. But it looks like it, Angel Reese reveals that her rent is eight. Well, her rent is eight k a month, and that's her, and that's basically her whole WNBA salary, which is seven hundred four k a month. And so basically, she says she can't even cover her own bills with this. She living beyond her means. She was joking. That was sad. Time. Nah, she but said because her MB, her WNBA check is her smallest check. Mm-hmm. She's making more off of her shoe sponsor with Reebok, her podcast on YouTube, and. A bunch of her other uh, sponsorships that probably her MB, WNBA check is the smallest check she get. So just, she was like, man, if it was up to, if I literally just only made my WNBA check, shoot. She was like, I wouldn't even be able to afford my apartment. Because you think about it, she had the NIL deal, mm-hmm. which she was already making like between one and two million. I think it was like 1.4 or five uh, in an NIL deal. And when you go pro, just, those just convert into like regular sponsorship deals. True, true, true. I mean, and she got even more. You know that. Stop capping for her co-host. She said what she said. She said she couldn't even buy a sandwich for eight k. Hey, we could take her to Costco for sixty, seventy four k a month. They came in afford her a sandwich. We'll take her to Costco or Sam's Club. We'll get you the the cheap pizza and the the cheap food. Hey, hey, Costco pizza is fire. You nasty. But play the video. We gonna we got the we got the video right now. Angel Reese saying how she ain't making enough money. Somebody need to save her. He ain't pays them bills, baby. I just hope y'all know the WNBA don't pay my bills at all. I don't even think that pays one of my bills. bills. <laughs> Literally, I'm trying to think of like my rent for where I stay at. Let me do the math real quick. You might cover that. Yeah, it's it covers, like, it it, covers that. What is my? I don't even know my salary. Seventy four. Okay. I don't even know my uh, salary. Does it? Let me see. Even... <laughs> Yo, I'm living beyond my means. <laughs> it's like. No, my rent is more than that. It's eight thousand. <laughs> I'm living beyond my means, like y'all think, babe. If y'all thought, uh-uh. it's like I don't, I don't even know my salary for WBA. A thing. Did I even pay my card note? <laughs> yeah, I think I paid the card note. Yeah, I ain't doing it. That thing. Oh, when is that other hot tea coming up? But that's sad because that really shows you like. Obviously, you're fortunate to be in the come, but think about how many people don't and have to actually live off that. I know. That's really sad. I wouldn't even be able to get a sandwich if I wanted to. Yeah, I, no, so I wouldn't be able to eat. I wouldn't be able to live. Exactly. I knew it was but in the exact like context I was talking about. Yeah. New York, like, that's crazy. And and you make the same amount of money if you live in New York, California, which are the most expensive states. I know. Versus if you live in like, imagine Minnesota. Where, yeah. Like him, maybe he and Yeah. Yeah. And their Damn. tax rate is so much higher. And I want to live somewhere safe, so. So crazy. Do you have one career dream? For basketball to win a WNBA championship, for off the court, I want to own a team and I want to own a modeling agency. I'm 6'3", and I think it's really hard. It was hard for me growing up, finding clothes, even self-esteem, like just being the tallest in the classroom. My grandma always told me you were going to stand up for a reason. I just want women to just be empowered because we always get less. We never get the full potential of everything. We always get told no, and I just want like my modeling agency just to be exemplified about you don't get told no. Like You're going to get the yeses. You're going to get more yeses than nos, and just being able to know that. So I'm excited for that. I know that's going to come soon.
What does owning a team look like for me? Yeah. So I already have part ownership of a team, of a soccer team. Um, so yeah, I've already had that, but I want to own a basketball team. Just being able to grow the sport. There are so many women that I play with in, in my whole career that deserve a spot in this league because women do deserve it. Like facilities like this, every woman should be able to step in and be able to go into a locker room and be able to have a safe space or go into a gym at three o'clock in the morning where they want to do that. So I want to be able to just invest. N so basically counting it up, that's 96K a year. That's how much she's spending on rent. So, I mean, she is telling the truth. 74K that she's making up WNBA. 96K a year. That's how much she's been paying on rent. And she's living in Chicago. She's probably living downtown. That's yeah, she's probably why she's paying that much. Exactly. It's like expensive. You, like you said, she has her endorsement. She has the Reebok endorsement. She has the Beat by Dre endorsement. She has the podcast. She has the Reese's Chocolate uh, she was got them Reese's it? Pieces. Horrible. But I don't think that she stood out because she was tall. Hmm? I think it, she said she stood out because she was tall. What do you think it was before? I think she stood out because she looks like Sid. <laughs> <laughs> For my sake. She, I mean, a lot of people say, every time I see, every time I see her post, everybody, I see, you guaranteed to see at least three Sid posts. Even oh, the gifts? The th yeah, three yeah. Sid gifts. It's all, it it's, never It's fails. just jokes, though. No, everyone knows she looks good, but it's just funny. It's just funny, but what's not? You know, when, you know, some girls got their eyes just a hair w a little bit wide apart, or some girls got the T-Mac eyes. You know how that goes. So horrible. But, I mean, it is bad how, like, the WNBA players do once the season, season's over with. They got to go overseas to, like, Russia to play basketball. So they have to do things like get a whole bunch of endorsement deals or uh, find That's different. how Brittany Griner got caught up. And that's why a lot of people, that's why a lot of them aren't trying to go overseas anymore because they don't want to get they don't want to end up in that situation. You don't want nobody to end up in jail for so long until you don't the, want. Hey, you don't want to be the Russian probe. Fact. <laughs> definitely don't want to be. That is terrible. Definitely don't want to be that. And also, basically, what she's doing is since she's not going overseas, she's going to be in a three on three basketball league in Florida. That she's going to be doing what she said within like a uh, sign to sub co host or playing her game one. Exactly. Me, gonna, you, and real good underscore Doty versus oh, Angel lose. Reese. Oh, he night. Caitlin Clark. No, he can't. Horrible. And then, I mean, she said she's going to be making at least six Our figures. Our team is not going far if you're the second best player. Horrible. They said, I'm, we're going to the chip. They said she's making at least six uh, six figures in three months where she's doing this whole three on three thing. So that's great. But I mean, with the whole new deal coming up with the whole uh, WNBA, the CBA. CBA. CBA that should be coming up in 2026. So hopefully that would uh, up the, the pay rate. So a lot of these girls don't got to go overseas to play basketball or they can, what? They can afford their rent. That's 8K a month, even though. But you know what's funny? You hear her talk about, oh, she can't pay 8K a month, but you hear other people with their rookie deals. Like, Gilbert Arenas talks about how he was broke. How, like, he was basically living he was living in a hotel, and, like, you know, the NBA players had to give him money. Or, like, Chad Johnson, when he was a rookie coming in, he oh, didn't that, buy that, a place. That, he that, lived in the facility. That's people that uh, just, like, blew money like crazy, though. That's people that just got their first pro check and had no control. Or their first pro contract, you get like a million dollar signing bonus, and they run through that money in a month and a half. But I mean, all but every NBA, but every rookie NBA player has that same like that. A same, lot of them do the, that same NBA story. How like, well, oh when yeah, when you get when you're like, oh, I got a two million dollar signing bonus. That was a lottery pick, and you're like, oh, two million dollars. I mean, I've never had more than uh, like whatever amount in my account, like fifteen, like a thousand dollars. Yeah, you know, I've never had more than a thousand dollars in my account. Like, oh, what am I gonna do with two million? And then they're like, they're not thinking about money at all. Just everything's a yes. And then they're like, oh crap! In like a month and a half, I've spent eight hundred thousand, or like, dang, I got bills due for another few months, and I only got two hundred thousand left, and my bills for the next few months are gonna be two hundred and eighty thousand. Like, oh god, I gotta get a loan from the bank or a loan from another one of the athletes. But that's the good part about being all these other rich athletes. They, yeah. they, they gotta have. It. But gotta get, that's why you gotta get a good vet. If you're a rookie coming and you would be splurging, you got to get you a good vet that's got a huge contract that's maybe his second or third huge contract. And you're like, vet, I need help. <laughs> help me. Exactly. That's I'm, what Nick Young did. That's what – exactly. He told you another one. Nick Young did that. Mm -hmm. But that's saying like with the WNBA, the most money that the person, uh, WNBA players are making is basically a quarter million. A quarter million dollars, and that's Jackie Young. And then uh, below – yeah, basically a year. Okay. She's making that. But then at the same time, in a year, on the other side, in a year, Steph Curry's making $51.9 million. Yeah, but we know, like, it, the NBA, CBA, they get these huge TV deals or streaming deals, and the NBA players basically get 50% of the profits, and that's what determines their contract and how much they can get in the salary cap. 
With the WNBA, it's kind of tough because they're actually operating at a deficit. Even with Caitlin Clark bringing all kinds of eyes to the WNBA. And shameful, you shameful Caitlin Clark fans that only watched Caitlin's game and didn't watch the rest of the playoffs. Shame <laughs> on you for only supporting one woman instead of all the women. Um, but you know that even with all that viewership, they lost forty million dollars. So, I mean, if you get half of the negative forty, so these women actually owe us twenty right, million dollars. <laughs> yeah, that's half of the bill. Mm-hmm. You get half of what you make or half of what you lose. Uh, if you if you wanted real diversity, but uh, no, these women deserve it. But, but they need the support. More people got to watch and not just be Caitlin Clark only fans. We watched the WNBA finals. We're going to talk about that in just a second. We also watched a bunch of Angel Reese's game and watch her be the uh, new age Dennis Rodman, mm-hmm. uh, the women's Dennis Rodman, and, and kill the rebounding and set all the rebound records. And uh, so. Hopefully, you know, hopefully she j- develops a jump shot. So She's she, working on it. She's getting better. She was oh making God. some mid-range and some threes. So does Ben Before Simmons. they shut her down for the season, she the last shot she made was a three. So, so you can go ahead and shut that up. Oh, gosh. Shut it right up. She's giving me Ben Simmons vibes. <laughs> no, she doesn't have a bad back. That's uh, different. And she's not scared of taking jump shots like Ben Simmons <laughs> crying whenever he's open and saying, oh, I don't turn over. Uh, but speaking of turnovers, man, looks like we're gonna turn over to this next topic here, man. This WNBA Finals was trash. This game was actually is uh, it's so crazy that I just literally talked of women's basketball because their <laughs> final product that the, the finals is supposed to be like the most like high level of basketball. This looked like, you know, like in the like we just saw an NBA preseason. They've had a few games, but, like, game uh-huh. one of the NBA preseason where there's, like, you know, 30 turnovers and, like, 30 fouls. Mm-hmm. And it just looks like, what are these players doing? That was this WNBA finals. Definitely. These girls were playing so rough. The refs were calling nothing. It was basically like rugby there. It reminded me of the way the Memphis Grizzlies used to play the grindhouse when they had Marc Gasol and Tony Allen. Because it was just all people just grinding on each other the whole time. Um, what Sabrina Isenzu went one for 19, but still won a championship. She basically had the Jason Tatum performance of the year. <laughs> and Brianna Stewart wasn't far behind. Missing she game winning layups that were wide open, air balling, you know, easy shots, missing free throws. And the end of the game was actually pretty disrespectful because, uh, the Minnesota Lynx, even though they kind of like really crapped the tank after halftime, uh, that the, I forget the player's name, excuse me, but she was in legal guarding position and she beat oh, her to the spot. Alani Smith. And if you look at it, Brianna actually traveled before she got into her, and it looked like an offensive foul. And even the commentators live on TV said when this got reviewed that this is going to get turned over. That this is clear that this was a, not a foul; it was an offensive foul. And then they came back and they didn't even give an explanation. They just said. The defender wasn't in legal guarding position. It's like, what do you mean? She was there way before, and the girl traveled. That was crazy. I mean, she, did, it, she did travel. Minnesota got robbed. I mean, they had an equal chance in overtime, but I could just see them being so annoyed with the game. Mm-hmm. I mean, in New York, it was like prison basketball. It was like the ugliest basketball game I've ever seen in my life. And this, I feel like this game hurt women's sports. That's how bad it was. <laughs> Golly. Is that bad? I mean. It was wh- terrible, dude. Like, it literally looked like, you know, like with little kids. Uh-huh. When you watch, like, little kids where they, like, they don't call traveling. Yes. And it's just, like, everyone chasing the kid with the ball. And it's, like, all kinds of bricks. Like, people airballing layups and airballing wide open shots. And, like, people just running into each other and falling down. Like, this is maybe the ugliest game I've seen. Like, it looked like the Memphis Grizzlies of old versus the Memphis Grizzlies. I mean, if, I mean, you They were scored, like, 40 points. Like, but, it was like, well, what was the final score? The final score was 67 to 62. And it went into overtime. That is ridiculous. In the fourth quarters, they were in the 40s and 50s. I mean, they get to that midway through the second quarter in an NBA game. And you played an overtime game, and that's where you're kind of your scores around. I mean, I mean, you they sh- need to change this. They need to lower the rim <laughs> so these girls can dunk on each other, and then nah, we can they have don't. posters. They have some. They have some. Uh, they have some college players that will be coming to the league real soon. I've seen them dunk. I mean, a couple she, of them. She can do the same. It's the same dunk, the but she can dunk. Little baby dunks, yeah, little but rim grazers. I seen. I seen no, that. But that's what I'm saying. I don't understand like why they they think it's such a problem. Like they it's too late up, now. They done, they've been in. Girls, they've been don't, since, girls don't play. Since 90, what, 97, 98? 
Yeah, but girls don't play baseball. They play softball. It's modified baseball. Mm -hmm. They don't play, you know, um, with a regular ball. They play with the girls' ball. It's a modified ball. So if if you already have to have a modified ball because the, the men's ball is too big, why wouldn't you have a modified rim to make it easier for them? And mm-hmm. especially if you – Modified what, three-point what line. I always said is if you look at the median height – of NBA players uh, compared to a 10-foot rim and find out what that distance is. And then you take the median height of the WNBA players and find out what the, what that equal distance would be and make it. It would probably be like an eight-and-a-half or like a nine-foot nine rim. I can see that. I can, I and can. then could you imagine if you saw like Caitlin Clark cross someone, like pump fake a three and someone go flying by her and she have a whole lane and come <laughs> down in the center, come down late, and she tomahawk on a girl's head? I would, I would watch every game. I would have league pass. <laughs> I, would, I would buy courtside tickets. <laughs> our team moved from our city to Vegas. I would fly to Vegas and have Vegas season tickets. Uh, to see everyone dunk on each other. Facts, but we got a video right here. We're gonna play the celebration. We're gonna say show you how surprise, how basically ecstatic the Liberty was, and talk about this foul play my was talking about. Oh, that was a travel. That's how you do when you have a one for nineteen performance. And then she got Chris Boshed. Looks like my coast when we got our first shit on one time. It's a party. I just wanted to go out there and play, you know, to win and just not to lose. And I think the experience that I've had, even though it wasn't a, the best experience and we lost in, in the past, it allowed me just to kind of just be a little bit more relaxed in the situation and just understand that these moments aren't guarantees. Like it's not, it's not a given that you have to kind of just take advantage of it, but also live in the moment and, and really appreciate what it took to get here too. Oh, my girl, Jaquilla Jones, 17, 7, and 2. Just balling. I mean, 18, she was. 18, 8, and 2. You got to round up, Kobe. So she's a 2021 MVP. She ended up getting uh, getting getting over to the, the, the New York Liberties. And then it's been set since then. I mean, uh, if you didn't know, ever since 1997, the, since the WNBA has been here, uh, the New York Liberty were one of the original teams here. They were the last team left to, that didn't win a title. Yeah, and they were the one of the original teams. Yeah, they was one of the original teams, that went, but they've been close. They became they uh, they went against the Comet. They lost against the Comet three times. They lost against uh, the Sparks one time in two thousand two. They lost against the Aces. Then they lost, last lost against year. the Aces last year. So now they came back. That's what the ladies, the uh, the coach for the other team was like. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. This is a six time going. So of course they going eventually got to win six one. Six times the so, charm. But yeah, like my coach was saying, the game was just nasty. Like it ended sixty-seven to sixty-two. Uh, I mean, it was basically a free throw game for the Liberty. Liberty shot 20, 20, uh out of twenty-five free throws. They made twenty-one, and then the Lynx only made seven out of eight. Yeah. So I it mean, was, and in the comment sections, I'm not mm-hmm. even trying to be biased. I mean, uh, I I like uh, you know the Liberty or the um, the Suns. The Sun, not the Suns. The Connecticut. Uh, what the Connecticut Suns, right? No, no, no. I, I, yeah, I do like the Connecticut Sun, but I was gonna say they didn't make it. But I was saying that the New York Liberty. The thing that was weird for me is, is that, like, you know, we had like a um, Jalen Brown thing with the Celtics, mm-hmm. where he, um, Jason Tatum, was supposed to win the MVP, but Jalen Brown would definitely weighed out, outplayed him in the finals. And over here, you got John Quell Jones outperforming the two main stars, and uh, Brianna Stewart. And uh, Sabrina, yeah, basically, uh, yeah, she out support, support, uh, outperformed them. Uh, well, Sabrina basically only had Sabrina only had five points. She was one for nineteen, and uh, at one point came from the three. She was one from ten for three. I mean, basically, it all came down to uh, Jaquilla, uh Naira, that Sabali girl you talk you, that you uh 
Smiley. They had a sister. Yeah. She she came in the third quarter, dropped thirteen, saved them. Then that Leon, then uh, that Leona girl dropped thirteen. So it was basically everybody else but the main two people that saved the day because the Lynx was coming out here balling. Like besides that one girl that uh, they caused the foul, they caused the foul, Alina Smith. I mean, she was hurt. Remember when she fell to the ground? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. She got slammed. Yeah, in she that got one play. But she was already that, hurt. That should have been called an offensive foul too. Man, there was a lot of bad calls in that game. It was, and I told you that the Jesus must be a Liberty fan because every time you, it was getting chance after chance after chance, like they were getting rebound after rebound, then the ref was helping them out, or the ref was like calling. Um, well, and and it's like the Liberty literally were like it seemed like the the, the uh, Minnesota was up by like ten. Mm-hmm. Like ten or twelve, with like a couple minutes, like a few minutes left going into halftime, and then um, New York kind of played rough a little bit, and they got it to with like seven, and then when they came out in that third quarter. They were literally playing like prison basketball. They were like literally riding them the entire time. They were dribbling. They could have called a foul on ever every single play, but never did. Mm-hmm. And like the uh, Minnesota scored like three points. Or five points in like ten min in like ten or twelve minutes, like a long like almost fifteen minutes. They only scored like less than ten points. Then they had the free. They throw. got shut the f down. Like, then, but it wasn't like I'm saying it wasn't just like they were playing that good a defense. It was they were just fouling them basically the whole time. Like they for them to play for them to like now that I realize like at the level that they were playing a defense like the prison ball style and they only shot eight free throws is crazy. <laughs> that is absolutely crazy. Because that one girl, uh, what's the uh, best player from Minnesota? How do you say her last name? Is it like uh, Collier? Or what's her name? Chessa, like, uh, I forgot. Chessa, I forgot the name. She Con- was like almost won one MVP. She, she won a defensive player of the year. Yeah, her. Yeah, she. Um, is she. Yeah, she. Um, she, she was balling, and even she started playing through in the fourth quarter. Uh, a lot of the contact, and uh, but there was plenty of times where she would like beat her matchup and get a thing to the hoop, and she would just get slammed. And the ball would go flying, and they would be like, turnover, no foul. So it's like they allowed prison ball on one side. The Minnesota was trying to match their energy mm-hmm. with playing that tough defense, but they were getting called for fouls when they were being tough. So it wasn't to me it wasn't really fair. Yeah, I feel like they that like Nike and Sabrina have been like doing that. Her whole Nike shoe has been really killing it. She did it for Kobe. And, uh, you know, that they want her to be like to get her championship and with Brianna already winning – with the Seattle Storm, uh-huh. and um, what was the girl that retired that did the commercials with Steph Curry? Sue Bird. She Sue was Bird. on the Seattle Storm with Sue Bird, and she won, I think, two championships there. And then uh, they wanted her to win another one because she's been uh, doing a, being a lot more of the face of the league. So I feel like just the NBA had more invested in Nike, had more invested in the Liberty, and I think that's why it won because it was definitely really questionable. Like It was a nasty game. Yeah, it was def. It was definitely an athlete. Yeah, yeah, like um. Uh, oh yeah, here Corley- go. Call it, call, Collier. Uh, Collier. Napisha Collier. Yeah, Collier. Her. Yeah, she's really good. I mean, honestly, she had like, not in any type of way, but like she has like a really good body for basketball. Like her like proportions for mm-hmm. her arm and leg length. Yeah. Like she almost has the proportions of you would want from an NBA player. Like, um, like she looks like, like she's almost like, she's not as tall, but she almost like, looks like a, like a stretch four, almost, you know, like a, like a Michael Porter Jr. or something yeah. but in the WNBA. So like, she really has a good body for basketball. She won defensive player of the year. And I, I think we're going to see more from her. I think Minnesota is going to definitely be back in the mix of things. For we, already know, we already know next year the Fever is going to win it. But y'all comment down below. How do y'all feel about this uh, championship game? The NBA, or the WNBA might do that after they saw the ratings. Because the, oh, Caitlin, they go only, down. the Caitlin only fans fell off and didn't want to support the other women. Exactly. I mean, hey, but we're going to talk about that. And they're racist. We, horrible. And no, we're going to talk about that the I'm next. I'm just kidding. I'm trying to light a fire. You gonna light a fire right here on this next? <laughs> you finna talk real racist on this next comment, right? Topic right here. Oh, let's go. So it looks like here yeah, finally the WNBA is opting out of the 2020 CBA. So um, finally they finna start getting some more money. But people were wondering how because the WNBA also lost 40 million dollars this year, despite uh, 2.3 million, 
2.3 million fans going to the game this year. Record setting numbers. We're going to play the video right here, let you know what the girls are fighting for. Then we're going to come back and let you some, know some more details about this, inform this stuff. Breaking news, the WMBPA Executive Committee and Board of Player Reps have voted that they are opting out mm. of the 2020 Collective Bargaining Agreement. So this means that the players and the league are now on the clock to negotiate a new CBA by the end of the 2025 season. And y'all, the timing of this decision is truly huge, coming off of a historic WNBA season that includes record viewership, increases in attendance by 48%, increases in merchandise sales by 600% compared to last year. So this is a huge decision that was just with, was made. And now we wait and see how the league and the players are going to work together for the future of the WNBA. So what are the players going to be asking for here, Chanae? What could we be looking at? Yeah, the key issues are establishing a new economic model okay. that is truly more creative and ensures player wages better reflect the growing business. They also hope to build upon professional standards that are set by teams like New York, Seattle, Las Vegas, Phoenix, all whom have state-of-the-art practice facilities. And of course, they hope to expand lifelong benefits for players, including retirement and family planning. So see, you can see right here, these are some of the points of emphasis that the league and the players are going to have to address. So if those are the point of emphasis, I'm wondering, Chanae, how far are the players looking to take this? Is there any possibility that we could see a possible work stoppage here? To me, what I have been... Uh, I doubt. I mean, I highly doubt they're gonna uh, they're gonna do a work stoppage. But right now, I mean, yes, they did opt out. They're still under they're still under contract until October 2025. So basically, this won't kick in until the 2026 season. And I mean, basically, the WNBA since Caitlin Clark and Andrew Reese uh, came in the league, they've been making a lot more money, a lot more revenue, and uh, a lot more revenue and ticket sales. It's showing here. Also, they have the new TV deal, which they got. They're gonna be making. Two 2.2 billion dollars in the next 11 years because you know uh with streaming services they're gonna be playing games on amazon they're gonna be playing uh, uh games on disney and mm -hmm. on nbc so games can be everywhere so i mean this is this is great but i mean a lot of other things that these girls are asking for that's for a pension because i didn't know they didn't they, i didn't know these girls wasn't getting the pension like the like with the old w the old nba players i think once you pass 10 years that's what Snail, that, that Tony Snail Tony tried to Snow do. Tony trying to get a contract. Yeah. Yeah, to get a pension for life so that way he get insurance for him and his kids. Yeah, you need at least do 10 years in the NBA. So in the WNBA, they don't have it. So they're trying to do it for the current and some and a That's lot of cool the former they're players. They're trying to do it for the retro players. And kind I wonder of how far go back gonna... and help them because, man, a lot of those retro players mm -hmm. do need help. They weren't making no money. We had a – our team was the uh, Aces. They moved from uh, San Antonio from the uh, San Antonio to Las Vegas. Yes. And uh, – you know they those when they were the San Antonio Silver Stars, they were making no money. My buddy had an apartment that actually a lot of the WNBA players lived in because they would be at the pool, mm -hmm. and they would be like two or three girls in an apartment. You know, like a, a two or three bedroom apartment, but they would all be living together. Roomy type stuff. Yeah, like 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 they were in college, but they were just WNBA players because they you know they they honestly weren't making no money. True, and they, and they don't want to do that no more. I mean, and also... They don't have to shack up with their teammates. In fact, they don't got to go overseas to play basketball. Also, they're trying to get more money. They're trying to get money for, uh, like, the, the players that get pregnant because they, they need more funds. And also... Yeah, I mean, of course, that should be covered. They tr Exactly. And also, they're trying to move up the, they're trying to move up the salary cap because right now the salary cap for all the teams is $1.2 million. Yeah. So it's too low, so they're trying to at least get it raised or get a soft cap so they can get more money. It's crazy, yeah. They they almost need like an inflation raise, to, to be honest, but, uh, so they could have a, a better lifestyle. But it's tough, you know, like we see here in this post. Uh, mm -hmm. They lost $40 million, even though they had a record-breaking year. You still ended up $40 million in the hole, and it's just really the NBA financing it. Yeah, basically. You know, if it wasn't for the NBA and this was a league on its own, alone, like, it honestly it would have never made it from day one. I mean, how long? It's been around since what? It's 97? 97. 97, and it's never turned a profit. 
Yes, and they're not gonna turn a profit for a while. I mean, a lot of the a lot. So basically, like basically, like my co-host was saying, like the NBA basically takes care of sixty to seventy-five percent of the WNBA, and a lot of the owners right now are kind of upset about that because uh, they're not really being basically transparent with the when when they will be making money. So owners like James Dolan have been uh, hounding Adam Silver to get this information because they're not making any money for this. They the a lot of these NBA play a lot of these NBA owners are doing. Doing things for the WNBA, like opening new teams, like well, the, yeah, the that, Valkyries when they get a new team. What happened? That's why you're seeing so much movement because a lot of the owners would own the NBA and the WNBA team, but the WNBA team they would basically look like, hey, like this is basically just a bill on my NBA team. It's not bringing me anything. So that's like even what happened to our local team. They got sold to an owner. Uh-huh. So now the NBA, the NBA owner doesn't own the NBA and the WNBA like affiliate team. Uh, affiliate team the WNBA team now this moves to another city and it's its own franchise basically and that's why they just get subsidized by the NBA still even though they're not like connected directly to an NBA team True, and not and not connected. And they also have they also have to fork out a lot of money. Like the owner of the Golden State Warriors has to pay like a total of fifty million dollars, and and uh, they pay like fifty oh, million dollars. They ma- they're making the Golden State Valkyrie that True. we covered, where they're going to do the uh, the expansion draft. And then you got two more teams coming after that. You got the Toronto team, the the owner and the Toronto. The owner in Toronto just dropped a uh, hundred and eighteen million dollars because he bought a, a they got the team and a new practice facility for him. Yeah, it's crazy. You wonder if it just is like, is the WNBA teams basically come like tax write offs to help super wealthy people? You know, they might spend 120 million, but if you're a billionaire and that's you know on your on your taxes or whatever you're doing, and you know it really doesn't affect you like that. It's more of a feather in, in your hat than rather you trying to make money. It looks like that's kind of what it, it looks into. And um, Angel like- Reese says she wants to own a team, but. You know that'd be, but she, even if they did get a way to own a team, they're still going to get subsidized by the NBA. So it's not like you're going to, you know, just lose out and being crazy dead or anything. True, you, you, true, you won't. But I mean, that's why these owners saying, like, if these uh, WNBA players want more money, then they're going to have to start doing more things. Like when they make these commitments to go overseas, once it's time for training camp, ain't no if fans are bust about it. You guys need to come back. No more waiting. No more uh, holding out. Because I mean, it is slowing up training camp. It is slowing up uh, things that WNBA well, has. Yeah, and you don't want girls being late from their overseas contract where they're missing the first two weeks to a month of a season or missing the whole training camp or first few weeks of the season. I mean, that's messing up teams. We even saw that this year, some girls that were playing in the Olympics Mm -hmm. decided to focus to play with their national team. First, the first half of the WNBA season play the Olympics during the, uh, the break because they broke for the Olympics and then just come back for the second half of the season after the Olympics. Um, Gabby Williams that plays on the Seattle Storm. Yeah, she did uh, that. She's one of the players that did that, and I think they re-signed her. But, yeah, she didn't play the first half. She was just training in France with the France national team, and then when they uh, got the silver medal uh, after that, she came back and was uh, was a starter right away. But they, they you know, didn't have their player for half a season. Yeah, and it, yeah, that's that's basically messing up ticket sales. So the owners don't want that. So the owners are gonna start giving out more money. These WNBA players are gonna have to start doing that, and also they're gonna have to start trying to get some more views without Caitlin Clark. Cause I mean, it's showing here that Caitlin Clark averaged at least around two million uh, views. Those average like two uh, two point nineteen million viewers per regular season, and I mean this this uh, WNBA finals have only averaged what one point twelve. So. They need to find a way to get more views without Caitlyn, but I wonder if this is going to continue going and how long is it going to go. Uh, I mean, because this year well, I watched a lot of games. I, th- but- I think what hurt the playoffs is, one, Caitlyn getting swept in the first round. Mm-hmm. So all of her fans, her huge fan base fell off. And then with them having the break for the Olympics, so the season went a little longer than normal, they ended up getting a playoff started to be in football season. And you know when football season starts, you know, football is in in America. Facts. That's what everyone loves. Yeah, football so, or wrestling. Actually, wrestling is the <laughs> biggest sport in the United. You get the most subscribers on YouTube. Don't be hating. I told Seth about that, and he didn't believe it. I was like, Seth, did you know that wrestling's bigger than NBA, NFL, and MLB fans combined? 
And he's like, that's not true. And I was like, we saw it on an article, and we even covered it in a, a podcast a long time ago. Mm-hmm. And you look at it. You combine all their subs, it still is not as many as the wrestling subs. People like entertainment. I mean, like you said, you lower the rim. People want entertainment. I mean, that's what I'm saying. They might have to – they'll be able to adjust their shooting, and especially with Caitlin Clark already shooting deep-range shots. But you got – like uh, uh, Sabrina, Sabrina is going one for 19. She maybe needs that rim lowered, <laughs> you know, so they could shoot for even farther or actually make it. Mm. So um, I think that they could adjust to it and it would just make a whole, it would, it would just bring another level to the game. I, can see I that. mean, could you imagine Brittany Griner instead of doing like hard layups would be just shacking girls all the time that every now and then up and then, and then, and then just, just catching and tomahawking on girls heads. That'd be something to watch. I mean, yeah. I would watch every game. It reminded me of, like, slam ball. The NBA is entertaining because you never know who could get dunked on or shoot a crazy three. So, lower rim, more three-pointers, and you bring dunking into the game. Facts. You need to make me the commissioner right now. Horrible. NBA season is coming up real soon, so we definitely will be covering that. But y'all comment down below how y'all feel about the WNBA season. Did it live up to the hype? No, Coach, you didn't live up to the hype. Welcome to new music. We're checking, <laughs> checking out the new music that Horrible. just dropped. We got Dragon Ball Z and Goku here going on with the theme. But let's go ahead and get into it. Thank you all for watching. If you watched this far, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, hit the like button, hit the notification bell, do all that. Music Mix number five. We got uh, Cheap Keith's new song with Ian. We'll get into more of that later. Check out that in the playlist section. We're always adding new music to that. This is the projects that just dropped this past week. We got Yeet dropping, Ian. We got Benny the Butcher, JP, any uh, 03 Greedo. Shout out 03. His was almost my album pick of the week. Jennifer Hudson dropped. I didn't know that. She oh, could man. drop it on me. Horrible. Uh, I need, what's that? Oh, Filthy dropped? Oh, I'm definitely going to listen to some Filthy when I go to bed. Scarface? Uh, no. Filthy Rich. Oh, that's the name of that one. Filthy, uh, yeah, Filthy dropped from here from California, man. Definitely need to go check that out. But, I mean, my pick of the week is Big Boogie from CMG Music Gang, man. It's a... Uh, Straight bangers on this. Boogie. Straight bangers on this track. If you want to get the party started, you want to see some uh, some girls start shaking that. Man, play some big book. They definitely gonna uh, turn the party up, man. This album is pretty decent. It I looks mean, like an ALE kid. It's actually better than I actually thought because his his voice, like he's all raspy. He always uses auto tune. This one he didn't use a lot of auto tune, so I'm messing with it. I'm definitely messing with this album, uh, so yeah, I definitely go check it out. But that's my yeah, pick of the week. Your artist, you like Y to Be Fat and Forty Two Doug. You also like Money Bag Yo and Glorilla. She just killed it for the girls. Is it CMG? Because CMG, uh, CMG, you know, CMG got Gorilla and Money Bag. Oh. Money Bag sound Y to Be Fat. We paper right over here. And you know, Forty Two Doug is uh, what's it called? The Lakey girl. I forgot oh, what yeah, that was. I forgot. Yeah, Lakey yeah, is from uh, Milwaukee. But moving on here, man, my co-host pick is Ian. We got Ian, and he's chasing horses or whatever Ooh. his name is. His is a stupid album name. But the music is fire. I'm surprised my co-host liked it. I'm, I'm, I've seen the stuff. It's like I if know. I made an album. He's basically imitating me in my oh, classic. Lord. He probably got a copy of my unreleased music from college. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I'll just copy Chico Grande. Shooter McGavin, baby. He's got the rhymes. He's got the times. Oh, Lord. The but, rhymes and the times. Uh, but the Goodbye Horses. Things. And he's done a bunch of old Chief Keef S type beats early, yes. like 2010 or 2012 to like 2015 type beats. Uh, Shoot out till I die are uh, good. He got Chief Keef on Shit Sad number seven. Best song on the album to get Chief Keef to rap on a classic beat. So that's why I give him his props. But this kid literally sounds like what would I mean to make music back in the day if I took music seriously. And uh, actually put some stuff out. Welcome to Sim City 4. It's only 10 songs. What? That's trash. I'm definitely going to listen to it. But uh, yeah, definitely check out that Ian Connor, man. That's our music picks of the week, man. We won't steal y'all wrong. This Ian Connor is actually better than I thought. Make sure you follow me on X, Felix Supreme 305, with my co host, uh, Papa O Block. Also. <laughs> <laughs> follow what? no follow us on twitter papa oblick felix supreme 305 like comment subscribe there is the qr code the qr code for crib reactions on instagram tales from the crib instagram TikTok. follow us there let me bring up this bando music so we can get the f out of here you already know man you already know what i'm gonna say oh no they're trying to give us ads All right, well, don't do it you already know what i'm gonna say man thank y'all for watching thank y'all for tuning in you already know what it is man if you want your weekly mess your weekly gossip man you tune into the right place 
is TFTC Podcast, Tales from the Crib. Chico Grande Chico, two times. Let us know if you like the two-hour show. I guess my co-host is long-winded. He has some stuff he wanted to get off his chest. It was the Gucci Man topic. Yeah, sorry. We're big Gucci fans over here. We love you, Gucci. Hey, yo. Gucci. Gucci. Horrible, but, but man. Thanks for R- tuning in. What? R- R.I.P. Liam Payne, man. Safari, we praying for you, man. We praying for you to find better days. Make the same. We will be watching your documentary. Hey, it's yeah. slow-mo. Hey. Hey, but, hey, man, we out. Thank y'all for watching. Latest.